Electric Boogaloo, the ultimate show with Kelly, Ozone, and Turbo. Electric Boogaloo is break dance too. Yes, ooh. Hi. Electric- Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. That's right. Take some PCP with us, friends, because this is a podcast on the internet with a bunch of content creators who make cool shit, and here we are talking about it. I'm the best guy ever, and we're joined by Tom Oliver. I am a sequel to myself. I've revived my old channel. Mm. It's Mm. back. I have 10 new videos up in two weeks because I'm a fucking god. Go subscribe to it. Impressive. A hypocrite is here. This is part one of my sentence. This is part two of my sentence. The sequel. What do you think? You better use a semicolon to break that up. Otherwise, that would have been two sentences. I can't just say semicolon out loud. What am I, gay? (laughs) Yeah, and we've also got Digi Brony MLP. Once again, our favorite. PCP2 Electric Blue. There it is. Uh, We're talking about sequels today, everybody. Sequels is the topic of this episode of the PCP. We're really, really scraping the bottom of that barrel. And God, does it feel good. God, does it feel good. That's that's where the that's where all the gold cakes on. So when you scrape that shit up, uh, you know, the, the people scraping appreciate the it. Scraping the bottom cake. of the barrel is totally thematically relevant to the topic of sequels anyway. Because you are that's not really wrong. what they do in sequels. You gotta just like, oh, uh, original ideas, fuck it. We're just gonna milk this and we're gonna have right, well, halloween you know, I, 18 i think we made that argument about remakes when we did a remakes episode right but i think sequels are a little different depending on what kind of sequel it is Agreed. because the way i see it good sequels are all about taking the original and looking at it with a critical eye and saying how do we do it even better mm. you know mm. agreed at least ideally. in a perfect world that's what yeah. all sequels would well, be and you know my i'm play- oh, go on go on go on well, I was just going to say, like, a perfect mm-hmm. example of that, the perfect sequel of all time, Shrek 2, you know? The, the, <laughs> it, it, it improved on all all aspects of Shrek. <laughs> and oh. I like it. It's really good. <laughs> I actually hear that opinion most of the time about Shrek 2. Shrek 2 so. is liked, I think. And so is Shrek 3, isn't yeah. it? Uh, uh, not no, so much. In fact, not. 3 and 4 no. and 5 and 6 and 7 are, like, they're worse than are Kingdom there, are Hearts. There really, are there really 7? There's a lot. There's at no. least five. There's at least. Yeah, th- there's at least no, four. There's, like, there's at least there's, four. Th- there's three and four. I think. Okay. Okay. Look, I, well, well I don't know. This is a corporatized world right. we live in. It's very possibly it could be seven Shrek That's movies. I wouldn't off. put it past oh, oh. them. Hey, well, I was just playing a sequel this very morning. Actually, I'm not sure if it counts, so you guys can tell me. Uh, does, like, does Mario main li- like, do the mainline Mario games count as sequels? Like, I'm playing yeah, Mario Odyssey right course. now. And that's a I sequel, think that right? Counts. That definitely counts, um, yeah. I think that's I, an interesting question. Yeah. Like, Mario Galaxy 2 is that's, very definitively yeah. a sequel because mm-hmm. it's literally, like, the same thing, but they built on it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, mm-hmm. that's exactly the kind of sequel I'm talking about where they, they took the first game and they said, okay, this is great. What can we do to tweak it to make it, like, a little bit fresh and yeah. new but still yeah. be the same? It's, 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 but it's like, like a sequel is one thing, and then there's, an, there's like, a next one in a series, which is right. yeah. may or may not be numbered, but that. it's... I think, I think, I think more, like, all the Mario games, they're sequels to each other. I think... I think well, the, the okay. core the core ideas in 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 Mario Odyssey is you know the the platforming the jumping and all that stuff like that's that's mm-hmm. an idea that has been in Mario's DNA from the original Super Mario Brothers and all of these are just iterations and ways yeah, of like but tweaking about, the formula. But what Iteration about, is a good word, but I don't know if I'd use sequel. Yeah, like look like at Doctor Mario, means, beloved entry in the Mario franchise. That's a spin-off. Totally that's changed. Totally I, different. That's, like that's the idea that's of, of like sequel <laughs> is like you would watch them or play them in a series. Like they are very right. closely linked, and you would go if you Which wanted I don't to think do all of the them. Case you would just, for, yeah, yeah. Like well, hey. Mario Odyssey is built is built so that you could play it as your first Mario game. Right. Sure. Like they want you to be able to do that. You, there's no need to play Super Mario 64 first. Whereas with with the Galaxy games, I think they definitely intended like hey liked galaxy one now you can do another one you know like it, so it that almost, to me is more sequel that almost works as an expansion of sorts it's it really is kind of like a level pack and then there's like additional new powers you get. It, it, it reminds well, me a little bit of like brood war from starcraft how like it like that's kind of what you get you get like a bunch of new levels a bunch of new worlds and then like like yoshi was the big addition but other than that there's not a heck of a lot well, okay it's, here's it's a question i have for you well, guys 
What was Gibbs saying? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say like the that's interesting. You say StarCraft because that that mm-hmm. ha- that has like DLC, but it's also a sequel to StarCraft One. It's like right. Well, I'm talking about like I'm talking about sequels and there's there's like there's there's expansions. Sometimes there's DLC that basically are sequels. Sometimes there's DLC that continues the narrative. The line is blurry. Well, here's the thing. I think we're forgetting something very important. We're all trying to define. We're forgetting the fucking uh, urban dictionary. Urban dictionary is what's going to be able to define this for us. So we don't (laughs) need to sit here arguing about it. I've got it open. I've got it open here. Well, let's let's settle it once and for all. Okay, here we go. Uh, sequel, uh, something of inferior quality, an utterance, <laughs> an utterance of absolute disgust. Uh, and here's the here's the full thing: a word that owes its second meaning, its second meaning. Okay, to the long list of low budget waste of space sequels to box office smashes in which none of the original actors appear, the storyline is either non-existent or piss weak, and the only and the only way that the 12 year old mentally challenged director can salvage this train wreck is through gratuitous use of full frontal nudity that would horrify even the most seasoned SBS world movies connoisseur. Uh, That's a very interesting definition because what they're saying is they're defining mm-hmm. sequel as why it is a slang term to right. insult somebody. Like, like a, this is Urban Dictionary. Um, that's why I'm never ending because the sequel's never equal, as mm. Endless Jess mm. has says in uh, The Coolest Guy. You know, it's th- there's an idea that referring to someone as a sequel is referring to them as inferior to the original. Right. Um, but... But, you know, the best sequels are typically better than the original. Here's a question I want to ask you guys regarding the Mario thing. Mm. Do you think of the Zelda games as sequels? Because whereas Mario has retained most of its core elements in each of these uh, other 3D games, Zelda is pretty fucking different. And there's only one Zelda game. No. There's only a couple of them that are, like, considered actual sequels in the canon. There's Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and then there's Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, like, two through seven. They're all the exact same game. You played them all, Tom? (laughs) There's different window dressing on them, but they have mechanics. Have you played them, Tom? Did you play those Zelda games? I've played a bit of Ocarina of Time. I played through all of Skyward Sword, objectively the worst Zelda game of all time. It's the, mm-hmm. it's a train wreck of Titanic proportions. I, I've played all of them. I played all of them except for Wind Waker, admittedly. Though I did play Phantom Hourglass. Uh, I would cu- count all those in like the same camp as like the Mario sequels. Like they are refining the formula, and like just because like they're they're different sorts of games, but they're the same sort of thing where they're just like progressing in some I particular mean, path. Like, and like yeah, like if you compare. Like, let's say you compared Mario Sunshine to Mario Odyssey. In both games, uh, Princess Peach is captured by Bowser. Mario's got to go save her. Mm -hmm. He does this by jumping... On on things occasionally using Princess Zelda's captured by Ganondorf. Right. He has to cut lots of things. Same that is not shit. a thing that even happens in most Zelda games. How often has Zelda been kidnapped by Ganondorf well, in the Zelda franchise? I mean, you could you could I more mean, or less say it that it happened captured, in the new it's one. It's either it's How, either she's captured or turned to stone or something that is bad uh, by Ganon. Think, right? Okay, nuance. Legend of Zelda: The Minish Cap. Zelda's not in it. Ganon's not in it. Um, Zelda's that's not true. In She's in it. She's at the very beginning, and then she gets. In uh... fact, Zelda does turn to stone. Oh, that's right. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Vadi does uh, that whatever. shit. Whatever. Well, but there's, oh, there, there ain't no goes. Ganon. <laughs> Vadi uh, video. My, uh, speaking my point of Vadi is... video, um, <laughs> Dark Souls Two. That's a sequel. That is a sequel. Oh God, that's no good. Very good. That's an unfortunate <laughs> sequel. Uh, well, uh, let me let me back mm-hmm, up for mm-hmm. a second. Uh, Oc- uh, Ocarina of Time versus Majora's Mask, which is actually a direct a sequel direct sequel's, to Ocarina right. of Time. Right. Yep. Um, very thematically different. Right. Like you know, different tone, different kind of atmosphere, and I think some of the Zelda games are are enough different thematically that I don't know if I'd consider them a sequel. Although, in that case, it is actually a sequel, and it is the most different. Indeed. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess, I, I guess my, my definition of sequel has always been more, at least in terms of games, has always been more about the, the underlying mechanics and the, and the like, identity of the game. Because, like, you play a Mario game, it always feels like a Mario game. You know, you, you never would mistake it as something else, even though there's lots of other new ideas and new part. mechanics being layered on top of it. The base idea of, like, they all kind of feel very similar. You know, you play, like, Super Mario 3D Land for the DS, and you play mm-hmm. Mario Sunshine, and, like, the core mechanics of, like, how Mario handles, how he moves, the base moveset that he has ever since Super Mario 64, that's all pretty much the same. And, like, there's iterations and refinements and tweaks, but, like, you go in expecting a certain feel when playing a 3D Mario game, and ever since Mario 64, that's really been there to some degree. And so I feel like that underlying pedigree yeah. is what defines a sequel. And while they don't have to be, would like, you say, a linear would you progression... Put Super Mario th- would you put Super Mario 3D World in there then? 
And because that game plays yeah. very differently. Would Super- you say it's also part of that same sequel lineage? Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I haven't played a whole bunch of it, despite the fact that it's right behind me right now. Um, but I, 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 despite the fact that it's like, it's more, that's the one where it's more like, it's 3D, but it's like an isometric or like, kind of you, view, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. I think the mechanics there are still pretty much the same. Like, it's still a platformer. Like, the, the it moves very it's similar. It's interesting to me, though, Tom, that you seem to be defining sequels based on more of like the, on the mechanics as opposed to like any. I don't know, like a narrative thing or anything. I mean, obviously, if it's something says like Metroid Prime Two, which like I think you were just playing, like yeah, okay, that's pretty clearly a sequel. Nate, but- you just reminded me of a term that'll help with this a lot. Yeah. Um, my favorite term, mm. spiritual sequel. Right. Right. Because when Your you look favorite. at is that like, a spiritual um, successor, or is that something different? There's we're about? both. Both are uh, used, but mm, I always okay. hear spiritual sequel. Like for instance. Um, a game like Axiom Verge right. that is clearly meant to be a spiritual connection to well, in this case, I would say like successor the same more so the sequel. Yeah, but yeah, a spiritual like, like, successor to Metroid, um, to Super Metroid. Sure. Like, um, like could it be that the Mario? Because when I think sequel, I do think continuing the actual narrative. Like, right. it's supposed to be I the mean, same, at least the same characters. Sure. You know, Mario or, or has the, the same, same characters for the most part, but there's really no right. narrative to continue. Yeah, you know, it's and just... like if you look at something like Mario Galaxy, like there's no plot connection, like seemingly no. at all to like any of the other games. Most other than of Mario Nintendo's Galaxy games too. don't do that. Their 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 narrative is just like a very loose framing device to yeah. To, to have the action. So I'm not sure and describing the Mario games as sequels makes sense. I think like spiritual successor, even though they're all like mainline well, Mario games. As far as I know, spiritual sense. successor doesn't even, when you say something's a spiritual I, successor, the term doesn't mean it's a sequel. It means I feel it's like, taking the gameplay identity of another game that I, won't get a sequel yeah. and injecting it into a new IP. That's why Axiom I, Verge is a spiritual successor to Metroid. It's not a Metroid title, but sure. it's trying to play like one and invoke that kind of same game feel. And what get what I, are you saying? I feel like the the whole Mario, the, the, like the the whole like sequels su- uh, successor su- spiritual mm. s- stuff, like it doesn't need a <laughs> word like that, because um, like it doesn't apply to any of them, like aside from like Mario One, Super Mario One, Super Mario Two, like even yeah. that's kind of weird. But the, I think the yeah, the that's whole not thing even like the real the ones, but yeah, is like people generally think of it as being if it's numbered, then it's a sequel. Right. And if it's not, then it's just part of the same franchise, and this word sequel <laughs> doesn't even come into it. Will, will even Radcon if it is, like... Awakening be a direct sequel to Radcon 2? That's... I don't know. I don't know. Or is it a spiritual successor? I that'll gonna, that'll uh, depend on the narrative content of Radcon is, Awakening. Indeed. I, I've been... <laughs> Are we gonna do the f- the fuck shit thing that movie producers do and not put the number on Radcon three? Is it I mean, just D- gonna D- be Davu Radcon been, Awakening? Davu has been making that joke forever that he insists that the next Radcon be called Radcon Awakening canonically, but with no three, with in no, it. Three, we, no three, no three. I would oh, say- that'll. Oh, that burns <laughs> me. We, we need to do that, and then the next one just has to be Radcon. <laughs> exactly. Or like, or like the, the Radcon. Radcon. Oh, no. but like, but the like Radcon. Radcon with uh. like. Lower yeah, lowercase lower <laughs> like, like alternating upper and lowercase for each oh, other. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Gamzee oh, and that's the one where Gamzee kills us all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, only that's when Munchie. Munchie. That's when, when Munchie when disembowels we, all of us. When wow. we inevitably Rad- release Radcon on DVD on each one, we have to make sure the titles are totally different on the side. Like they yeah. Don't, no... Rad- Rad- Radcon 4 has to be Reforgedcon. Oh, Reforgedcon. Yes. I do like that. I do like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, no, uh, I, I watched no, a sequel. Okay. I watched a whole series of sequels recently, which is interesting because it's kind of like the opposite of all this. So it's like, so I watched Rambo. I, I downloaded all the Rambo oh, movies recently and boy. watched all of them. And because, you know, because I heard they were cool and whatever. So I watched Rambo 1. And everyone probably knows this already. But Rambo 1 is like a story of a like tortured Vietnam vet who comes like back home and then like it suffers like because he's kind of a vagrant now. He, he's sort of lost his place in the world because he was such a badass soldier. And now he's just a civilian and, you know, doesn't know what to do with his, with himself. And like he's just in the world and he gets into some minor trouble with the law just by like loitering a little bit. It wasn't serious. But then he gets like abused by the cops. And then they like they 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 yeah, they fuck him up a little bit. And then like he goes on kind of a murderous rampage as they like try to track him down after he escapes from the from the thing. And, it, and then like he like kicks back into like Vietnam mode and goes full monster murder murder man and starts doing all this shit and so and it's so it's, it's really a story about a guy like being tortured by his past and like having to overcome it which and like at the end he turns himself in and like obviously has deep severe mental issues that he's gonna need to work through and then rambo 2 
like they they get him out of jail and then he's just sent on like a big epic like rescue POWs in Vietnam like military man mission. So it's like they've capitalized on like the reputation that Rambo established, Rambo 1, of this guy being like a big badass soldier, but like they completely abandon any of the like like the actual point of the movie of it being right, like yeah. about it goes it goes from like a movie trying to make a message send a message about like mental health issues and just be like what if we have uh mm-hmm. sylvester stallone killing some bitches that would yeah. be cool and it was great it was a legitimately great action movie that i enjoyed quite a bit but like it's it's like it barely resembles like it, you know in, in the tangible details it totally resembles rambo one but in terms right. of the actual point they were making they completely abandoned it and it's like I, I don't know, like, who was writing that. I, I'm very, really curious if the same people were involved with making Rambo 2 as Rambo 1. Uh, obviously, that feels still like Stallone was. meddling to me. Yeah, yeah. And I know Stallone, like, wrote Rambo 4 and was heavily involved in getting it done. But that might have just been, like, the resurrecting of the thing, you know, because this was, like, two decades after right. Rambo 3 was made and shit. But, like, so that's an example. Well, that like, was a sequel, surprisingly good sequel, though. I liked it. Lie. I thought I it was really it. good. I liked the part where that Christian lady got raped. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't actually oh get my raped, God. unfortunately. Uh, um, yeah, it was uh, it was good. It was good. Uh, here's a here's a sequel, mm-hmm. a pair of sequels that that I feel just for the sake of completeness needs to be mentioned mm. is Star Wars, yeah. um, which has gone in a lot of interesting directions with sequels because mm-hmm. you've got the original Star Wars, big huge film, everybody loves it, but it's kind of directed and edited like garbage. Like the it's really. They didn't like. Every, there was a lot of problems with the production, basically. And when you watch the movie, knowing that you can really see it, and then you get to the second movie, and it's such a clear improvement. Yep, like yep. they took the ideas and gave put them in the hands of a director who could actually like bring it to life, make it feel big and real and like mm-hmm. and dramatic. Um, and then you get to the third movie, which for some reason a lot of people don't like, but I think that movie capitalizes on the themes the best out of all the movies. It like brings it all home in a really good way. Um, and so you got this package where it's like, yeah, you got sequels that actually took what the previous one did, built on it, tried to improve. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then then suddenly they make three more sequels that uh, <laughs> oh, that are yeah. actually prequels and uh, <laughs> don't capitalize on any of the strengths of the original. Right. We'll see. And our total clusterfuck. But they, then mm-hmm. you get uh, like 23 more sequels a few <laughs> a yeah, decade yeah. later that are now just like like ch- cherry picking any tangible or abstract concept from the old films and like cobbling them together into a new film yeah, it's, it's that is just dizzied. like made up of the body parts of the old ones, yeah. you know? Yep. It's a descent into corporatization. Yeah. Which and is funny in this because case, Star Wars has always been a very corporatized product, but, but you like, know, it's gone to the nth degree now. The fascinating thing about that, that trajectory, is kind of like Star Wars like is is pretty beloved these days. It's quite quite popular. And uh, you know, it it was popular for a long time, but like it's really had a resurgence. And it, it's interesting to watch the trajectory of everyone loved the original films. They're they're highly beloved to this day. And then the sequels came out, and at the time it was lukewarm, and then some people were massively disappointed, and so uh, the, the reputation tank <laughs> Luke Skywalker warm. <laughs> Excellent. And then, and it's funny because, like, uh, and, and then, like, now, like, things have t- kicked back up as, like, J.J. Abrams has, you know, been able to make some some pretty good work, at least with the first one, and, and we'll see what if the others do as well. But, like, what's interesting is the first one was, like, a guy, Lucas, right? Lucas is running the show, but he was tempered by the fact that he wasn't, like, the god of the production of those. His creative input was subject to the quality control of lots of other people. And so it was it was sort of a one man show, uh, but then it in it was filtered through all these things, like sort of a committee that made it good. But then you got the prequels, and the prequels totally lost that filtering process and yep. only kept like what he said, like, we're doing this, make it happen, and nobody wanted to question him. Whether it was his fault or not doesn't matter. The point is it was just what he wrote on that paper probably too hastily without thinking about it enough. And that's just what became the movies. And we all know what happened with that. But now, and now we've got a purely corporatized product happening now, probably yeah. with people it's, who love it. It's gone too far in the other direction is what you're saying. Uh, well, like, actually I was going to say that like, it's funny that things have improved from just like one man's mad vision by making it well, corporate. Yeah. Like it, they've it, improved, but not like, 
mm-hmm. think the original was the perfect balance of those two. Exactly. Where, of like, course, of course. You know, he it was a lot of it was this one guy's interest and vision, but just uh, he had a good editor. Indeed. You know, Indeed. like a good like, and I mean editor in the uh, not like literal film editor, but you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, his fellow writers um, and stuff. In the metaphorical sense. Yeah. And now yeah. we've got like the editor writing the movie based on what he like what he thought needed to be fixed yeah. without yeah. the there's, actual there's inspiration. No yeah, the, exactly. The, the exactly. Is, is is like uh, we got we got to put we got to put a certain amount of of iconography to sell toys because right. he he right. uh, we're Disney yeah. and shit and you know it's it's not it's nobody's making these movies because people are longing to know what happens with with the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean I mean kind of the, people kind of did because they made books and comics. Yeah, I read a lot of those. It's it's just it yeah it's it's very much like you can't see it as anything other than a cash cow for them. It's hard for me to think of it as mm-hmm. like the same series. Absolutely. Like for me, no, for I can sure. I can easily watch those first three films and think this is three films that were that like not that they were all intended to be made from the beginning because like the first movie obviously was not supposed to have sequels mm-hmm. considering it wraps everything up perfectly fine, um, but like. When you watch the other two, you go, okay, this is a natural extension of that first movie. And then you watch the new ones, and to me, it just feels like this has nothing to do with it. And that's It's just, that's, it's a fan fiction. That's the thing. Know? See, like, I really did love the original Star Wars movies, and probably still would if I, if I watched them again. It's just, it's just kind of been a while. But, like, the originals have such a wonderful grittiness of, like, old filmmaking to them. They remind me, and not to suck their dick too hard, but they remind me of, like, like a Casablanca or a, 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 a Lawrence of Arabia. When, like, things were just, they had to get down there in the fucking dirt, and everyone got fucking filthy and dirty, and things were not polished and clean and so heavily produced. Things were, like, I don't know, fucking ramshackle. Like, the fucking Indiana Jones bit where the, the dude has, you know, got his sword play and he's danced around, and then Indiana just shoots him. Like, that, yeah. that's, that's fucking cinema gold. Uh, and the story behind it as well is, is incredible. And uh, I, for one, don't like the kind of, the way things have gone where they've, proceeded to make things so polished and clean and a lot of it i'm sure just has to do with the technology I, that's available makes it easier to do and that's kind of just a constant thing that as the as we march forward in technology that's more and more of a thing and obviously that was done to to the nth degree in the star wars prequels but even now i see i see elements of that in the in the newer star wars stuff and uh I, they just I, don't feel the same as like the originals that i did love so like to call it a sequel to me is like like this is what people complain about with sequels that they're not the thing that you loved so like stop fucking it up the 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 thing that's interesting about what you're saying is that mm-hmm. the those those old classics they were like big budget hollywood productions or uh, yeah. at least i think they were the best they, they could they, do they at were, the time mm-hmm. they were very like like big heavy production produced like lots of i mean you know it wasn't it wasn't like a board of directors right but i it the way just films were made back then exactly made you feel like um you know uh, you could imagine that there, there's a bunch of guys in the desert and they're trying to get a shot and then they have their lunch break and they're like whoo it's hot out here yeah uh, and yep. n- new newer movies it's like I don't know. It just it just feels like uh, I, I just imagine the color gray and then a computer screen. I just I just seize up. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, yeah, it's you know what so- I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Something that fascinates me. There's a lot of different reasons. Just as there are a lot of different reasons for a movie to be made or any product to be made, there's a lot of different reasons a sequel could be made, and. It's. I think a lot of like what makes it good or bad will depend on why it's happening. Totally. And like, like there's some that people make because it's like, yeah, I just have more ideas. I have another good idea with this world and character, so let's make a sequel. And those are probably going to be the better ones. And then there's the ones where it's like, the show just needs to have a sequel, like, like because like, it has to have one. Like, like Back to the Future one, two, and three are examples of that. Like those, they had to be done because they left it deliberately open, and they did not give you the answers. No, no, that's that's not what I mean. No, that's more of like, like that's more. They had more ideas. Like. If okay. like they left You're it open because like they when, knew they could make another something one. like uh, you know Assassin's Creed, where it's like it's a new year, we have to make a yes. new Assassin's oh, Creed. Oh, so, I see. Sort of like that. The example I'm going to use is fucking Psychopaths, mm, because Psychopaths mm. Two is horrible. Right. It is absolutely <laughs> abysmal. About that. Why did? Oh, 
Oh, and um, the only reason I think that Psychopaths 2 exists is because they were making a Psychopaths movie mm-hmm. and they wanted to keep the hype up for it. Sure. So, like, sure. That backfired. like the, the Psychopaths original TV show, like, like leading up to the film, first they re-ran the TV show as uh, hour-long episodes. Like, they recut it, they put each two episodes into one, and they added in some, like, little extra scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and they made it, like, like a, a rerun of the show to get people hype. Then they made a sequel to keep that hype going, and then the movie came out, like, right after the second season was over. So mm-hmm. it was, like, all this build-up to hype this movie. And all the people who made the original show were working on the movie. Right, So okay. in the meantime, oh, we need a sequel, but you guys are busy, so... Let's hire on some other Call fucks that who don't B-team understand boys. the story at all. Let's work on Dark you know? Souls 2 while they make Bloodborne. Yeah! Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. There mm-hmm. has to be a sequel, uh, but they don't have the right people to do it. So it's like, it's just born out of there needs to be one. you know. Right. And, and, and that's where you're going to get the people who don't that's... understand the fundamental right. artistic intent like Dark Souls 2 where they, they, their mentality was, Dark Souls is a hard game. Let's make a hard game. Right. You know. By putting a million fucking enemies behind this one door that there's no way to fucking <laughs> defeat at all. Well, that's that's yeah. that's yeah. that's the difference between people who see these things as as a piece of art and people who see it as a product to be totally, sold, right? Totally. Because well, you know, the, thing... the people who like the art, they're gonna sit down and be like, Okay, mm-hmm. I understand mm-hmm. why this exists and I know what the vision behind it is and then you have people in like corporate who are just like, Well, we uh we gotta make our money for uh quarter right, four, right. we're gonna really release think... this then and blah blah blah. I, I really think that um, a smart creator knows that um, the corporate entity is a part of it, and you can't just say, oh, I'm an artist, yes. and I, ha- I have my vision, and it must just be one thing. I think, uh, like, if you're going to be a smart boy, and you're going to, you know, make things, you're going to write stories, you're going to make movies, you should always have, in the back of your mind, uh, written down somewhere, uh, like, sequel bait, that if, if, if in case you're forced to make a sequel, you have yes. something. Yes. Uh, yeah. But you should never, like, plan for it to exist. You know... It's just, like, as a backup. Because then, mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can have both. You can be an artistic genius boy, and you can make money. Yeah. And you're very it's, right. It's, it's you're really a de- right. delicate balance. Especially I when recommend... You're... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Sorry, I recommend everybody, if you're trying to be a screenwriter or do anything that will involve you in the corporate world of, like, creating, um, listen to everything Max Landis ever says. Because he is extremely good at explaining that world and his place in it. And he has the mindset that Hippo's describing here. The dude's written over a hundred movies. Like, he just constantly has more ideas for, like... If they won't take this one, here's a slightly different version. Or like, here's my ideas for if I have to make a sequel. To here's to my it. ideas for That's this and that. So it's like he he's just got so many different contingencies for if it works because you can't be precious about your work if you want to sell it, Correct. especially in Hollywood. The, you know? Yeah. Uh, on this subject, though, uh, what's interesting is so one of the most beloved sequels of all time you may have heard of it is Godfather Two, and Godfather mm. Two was famous because it was the first sequel ever to win the Oscar for Best Picture. And uh, that was quite a noteworthy event. And what's especially interesting about it was that, like, as you'd expect, so the Godfather one was based on a book by some Dimitri Puzo or something. Yes, yeah, so some guy who had written a book and then they adapted it. And obviously, that's where kind of Mario Puzo, that's it. And Francis Ford Coppola directed it. And uh, that was a, a beloved project. Uh, actually, Coppola was actually put on it by a studio. He didn't even want to do it at first. And there was a lot of whatever, bullshitting going on. But it eventually turned out to be a great product. And so once Godfather 1 was such a success... Like, it it was a studio request that they go on and make Godfather 2. And, uh, like, so so he was not at all prepared to do Godfather 2. And there was, like, no... There, were, there was nothing prepared for it. But, like, it it's just that the people working on the project just happened to be so fucking good at making movies. And I actually think Godfather 1 is, like, kind of vastly superior to Godfather 2. But a lot of people love Godfather 2. And, and I do, at, at, for the most part, as well. Because uh, I'm a big aficionado of the Godfather movies, in case you can't tell. Uh, but uh, so ultimately, like, this was a situation where people were totally unprepared. It was just studio desire to make a sequel that had them do it. Because uh, Coppola had no desire to do one initially. It was just because the movie was such a fucking huge success that they made it. And yet, they just happened to get, like, enough brilliant people working on it. Coppola and I believe Puzo came back and, and wrote the screenplay for it as well. That they just put together something that the people fucking loved. And so, like, so uh, it can be done. Like, it can 
be done, you know? That kind of, uh, that's the same story of how mm-hmm. the Madoka movies got made. Oh, yeah? Where, like, Madoka Magica was just such a huge success that they came right, to Robuchi right. Dan and were like, do you happen to have any ideas for a <laughs> sequel? And he was like... I guess. What, what, and, uh, what if, what he if made a movie that is was the d- 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 devil, you guys? Yeah, he oh. made possibly the most divisive anime movie yeah. that I can think of. <laughs> um, personally, I'm in the I fucking hate it camp, but there's definitely a camp that absolutely adores that movie. I enjoyed it. Dude, that, that opening scene of them eating the cake monster. It, well, sure. Just the fan that service enough. is great. Yeah. God, that was so fucking tight. I, I like that movie. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> here's an I here's an idea. I want us to do some uh I want us to mm. do a round robin here. Word. And each of us talk about one sequel we absolutely hate or or are fascinated with in that it is bad. Um and one that we absolutely love. Great. And Fantastic. Are fascinated with its All greatness. Right. Um so we'll start with bad ones. Um I've got to talk about because I've been. This is something I experienced recently. Mm. The Lost Planet games. Have any of you played Lost Planet? I no. Played the, so, no. a little bit of it, but I. Are they at all like it. Dino Crisis? No. Okay, um, never mind. <laughs> but they're they're they're. It was a series of Capcom games that was for the Xbox 360. The first game was like a launch title for the uh, 360, mm. and the first game is basically like an arcade uh, over the person shooter game. Like, basically, you're on this planet of ice, and you run around, and you shoot, like, giant bug monsters. And uh, there's lots of mechs you can pilot, and you fight lots of, like, basically, you just, you you pilot mechs, and you fight uh, other mechs and monsters. And it's really cool. It's, like, five hours long. It's a fun game. But there's a lot of ways that it obviously could have been improved with the sequel. Like... It's, it's pretty small. It was obviously, like, testing the hardware because it was, like, one of the first games for the console. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, the the biggest strengths that the game has are that everything's really big. Everything's very vertical. You can, like, climb any surface with a grappling hook and stuff, mm-hmm. but not actually any surface. So that would have been an improvement. Make it so you can climb any surface. Uh, even bigger levels, even bigger monsters, more variety and choice because it's very linear. There's a lot of obvious ways the game could be improved. Mm-hmm. So they make a sequel. And in the sequel, because co-op games were all the rage at the time, they just completely retool the game to be a co-op game. And okay. even though they retain all of like the weapons and controls and monsters from the previous game, the level design is nothing like the first game's level design. And it's not really mm. built in a way that works with the mechanics. Like, it's built to be, they just took the mechanics of Lost Planet and put them in a co-op shooter game, but they don't make sense in a co-op shooter game. So it's incredibly fucking frustrating and broken. Like, it's a game that has some good ideas and moments where it kind of works, but, like, it's just not, it shouldn't have been done. Mm -hmm. Like, it was not the right IP to transform into a co-op game. And so it got pretty lukewarm reviews, um, and it didn't sell as well as the first game. So then they make Lost Planet 3, and instead of making a game, Capcom just outsources it to some other studio. Oh, no. <laughs> this studio, here's, here is everything I know about this studio. They've made six games, and if you go to the Wikipedia page, all it says about them is they are known for having uh, a 56 average on Metacritic. And what, across what company is this? I don't remember what it's called, okay. but like all they've made is shitty games. Mm-hmm. Like all of their games, every single one of them has like a below 60 on Metacritic, and that is the most noteworthy thing about the company. <laughs> so, they make a third <laughs> game that plays like it plays kind of like Mass Effect 3 if no one with any talent worked on the game. Uh-huh. Like if it if it was just a boring piece of shit oh, with uh, this no is redeeming Spark qualities. Spark Unlimited. Spark Unlimited apparently. Yes, yeah, Spark Unlimited. Mm-hmm. This game is fu- I played like the first 15 minutes of the game. I was like this is the worst game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> um so yeah, at that point the idea of what Lost Planet is is just completely it's gone. gone. It's gone, right. You know. And like in so you've got this first game that I th- would consider like a strong seven to a light eight like it's a very fine game it's not amazing and you can so easily imagine a perfect sequel but it's not there instead the the franchise is dead now because they the ran it into the ground yeah yep what a tragedy you know I, I almost example. i almost feel bad for like game developers who are put on a project that like corporate influence doesn't allow them to like actually make the game to like be consistent with the fucking mechanics and shit like can you even Mm -hmm. imagine developing a game where like you're not thinking about how to integrate the level design with the mechanics i can't even think about it but okay no matter it's Uh, i mean i feel like that uh 
mindset is sort of like a paint by numbers because you're given yeah. the iconography, the characters, the types of things that need to be in there because of like uh, let's borrow, you know, we we have to have this thing and that thing from that game or mm-hmm. movie and put it in there as to to link them cuz they're sequels and we'll do it kind of like they're not thinking about building a game, they're thinking about uh as cash it in. They're thinking about cash in on an IP. <laughs> yes, that too. That too. I, I I was like I I can't really think of like a lot of sequels that have disappointed me. Mm-hmm. Although um I don't know but um what the, about Jack one... Two? I love Jack Two. Wait, but I, I, meant, I was a I kid at Jack the time. X. Jack X. Um, well that's the, the, that's the thing I was gonna think of was gonna talk about because like that mm-hmm. feels like a spinoff because it's a different gameplay style in the same universe. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking Mario sixty four, I wouldn't consider a sequel. To, to Mario Super Mario World because of how different it is, and I would also consider mm-hmm. that like a spin-off technically, like like the three D Mario's were a spin-off of the two D Mario's because you can't really compare yeah. one you know sequel sequentially d- d- to the next. Well, let me ask which you is the way I think of, of sequels. Would it would it change your opinion if instead Mario World was called Mario Four and then Mario sixty four was called Mario Five? Would that change your view of it being a sequel? Um, I think, I mean, uh, the numbers thing is always, like, like you're hardwired mm-hmm. to think sequel. Right. Because that's just the word associated with numbered stuff. Mm-hmm. So I guess I might, but I, uh, if I thought about it, I probably would come to the same conclusion. Cause like, yeah, okay. Uh, it's it's uh, about branding. Branding is relevant as to whether something is considered a sequel or not. Fr- yeah. Franchises are terrible. I hate franchises. I hate the fact that yeah. things in a franchise... Can, hey, can can exist. <laughs> I know there's a sequel that you uh, despise. Ratchet uh, Future Tools of Destruction. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, What's wrong with that one? P- PlayStation Three. Uh, mm-hmm. th- th- there's a number of franchise uh, stuff. Oh god. One there's, of the, one of the Ratchet games from P- PS3 sucked. I played all of them like last year. Mm-hmm. One of them was really it, good. One of them sucked balls. I don't remember if it was Future. It was the first. Um, th- oh, was god. the one that this is the PS4 If it was one. the first one, it was Future. But there was one. Uh, Ratchet and Clank game for the PS3 that came out like later in the PS3 that had it was like it a was weird just... co-op uh, game yeah, that, that didn't that... play like Ratchet and Clank or mm. something. That that is all, definitely a spin-off. I don't know how much leniency I want to give to things that I would consider a spin-off. I mm-hmm. still just think spin-offs like, are gross. Yeah, but... I think yeah. of I think of Ratchet Deadlocked as a spin-off, and that's actually a good game. Yeah, that's I've heard people like that game. one. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, fucking Ratchet. And also Sly Cooper, like they had great games on the PS2. One, two, three, one, two, three. Three games on the PlayStation 2. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank went to uh, PlayStation 3 and it had uh, another t- trilogy of games. But because they knew they could make a trilogy of games, the game, the first game, ends on a cliffhanger, which always pissed me off because it's yeah. not a complete story. And you have to, like, they're, they're just like, yeah, like, we know you're going to buy right? all three of them. So just fucking don't get the whole experience, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Like, also, was it was just kind of shit in general. Yeah, I was under the impression it was, like, almost a, like a vignette game. Like, they, it was only, like, 10 hours long, right? Whereas, like, the previous it, Ratchet games had all been, like, 25 hours to get 100%. Yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. It, was, it was really short. The story was more stupid and the 3d the like playstation 3 shiny 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 textures really annoyed me (laughs) and and you know lens flares and stuff but um the sly games sly raccoon sly cooper the gang the 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 cool guys they 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 look really good in the playstation 2 and in the playstation 3 games they also look good like the visuals weren't fucked and the animations were good it was just something it's definitely because it was a different studio but it mm. doesn't. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't have the same, like, like a uh, wit and 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 like yeah. story structure. It's just sort of like, oh, when you, someone who doesn't know what's 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 up. When you don't have the people there, like it. when you don't have the people there who like made the thing and really understand it. Like you see this with like Tom Hewlett and the the later like Silent Hill games. Like the soul is just missing. The the even if even yeah. if it was never clear to anyone what actually made the games great, something's. You're never going to get everything, especially Man. if the person like Tom Hewlett is like a self-avowed Silent Hill fanboy. Like a fanboy is never going to fucking be able to like recreate it's, it. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's always it's always with the the creative minds like like yeah. you know j- j- well, the George Lucas he the, he needs to be there a little bit. And it's a fool's so errand it's... to even try to recreate it. Just make something new. Right. Okay, but whatever. It's... Well, that's that's the funny thing. Uh, something I've grown to appreciate more and more the more I look at art and the more I know like the backgrounds of it is mm-hmm. like there really is a lot of art that could only have come from that one guy. Damn right. Like no one else on planet fucking Earth could do it. Or that one team because of just, like, the chemistry between them maybe. You know, like, maybe it was just that the boardroom meetings they had were so magnetic yeah. that it spawned this this thing. And, like, you can't recreate that. You know, sometimes it's, even they can't recreate that. It, but like, Imagine yeah. imagine if all of the PCP members had, like, uh, moved on and given their channels to people who, uh, you know, tried to be, like, each of yeah. all of us. And then the PCP podcast was, like... It would be technically be everyone, yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. but it would be not a even, you know, yeah. not even slightly the same. That's an excellent. It, it way might of even be better, it. but like, it's just yeah, you need you need yeah. the you need the the, <laughs> the the brain power of the the weird guy. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, Tom or Nate, do you have a sequel that? Really hey, I, I've got you? something just to bounce off of that of that of the last point you were just making. I'll go into this, and it's like, um, I'll give you. a... Like, uh, time and place is so important for this. So, like, a game that I kind of like, Final Fantasy VII, like, a big theme in that whole game is, like, death and life after death. And all of that was caused by Sakaguchi's fucking mom dying during development of the game. And so they wrote it in. They, so they made it part of the fucking story. And, like, it, it's a huge thematic thing throughout the whole thing. And only because of the particular circumstances there did that even happen. So, like, trying to recreate that is whatever, pointless. But that that's what brings me to... A little sequel you might have heard of called Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Uh, direct sequel <laughs> oh, to Final Fantasy known. VII. Yeah, of course. Uh, and, and, and in a larger context, it's the entire compilation of Final Fantasy VII uh, that sort of counts. Like sequels, prequels, side stories, whatever. The whole thing is incredibly uh, offensive to me uh, in every possible way. It's them saying that, uh, and of course this extends to the remake as well. I hear all these fucking people chattering away every fucking day about how, oh, they're going to have time to expand on the things they didn't get to in the original Final Fantasy VII. Don't you want to explore a Final? Don't you want to explore Midgard? Don't you want to, I don't know, be they able to get more material? They don't remember what other things they wanted to put in unless they wrote them e- down. Exactly, in a little exactly. exactly. Only cu- you can maybe make a case that putting back cut content in maybe could fit in there. But even then, I wouldn't even want that necessarily. Maybe I'd look at a case by case basis, but like it's been like 25 fucking years or whatever, 30 years or something. Uh, like everyone's changed massively from the person they were when the game was originally made. Uh, like they have no business meddling with this shit. Somebody who fucking tells me Nomura is like qualified to remake Final Fantasy VII, get fucked. Yes, I know he was heavily involved in the development of the characters and even the, the shaping of much of the fundamentals of the personalities of those characters. He has no fucking business directing a goddamn remake of the game because he's not fucking smart enough. He's a corporate tool and a draw boy, and he has no he's no fucking purpose here. Whatever, fuck these people. If 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 um if a uh, ukulele has taught me anything is it's oh, the oh uh, yes the getting the same guys to do the same thing still can have different Dude. results if the people change because they can't help but change because time. Mm-hmm. We didn't even yeah. talk or about if that. But that's in such the same a, environment. Right. That's yeah. such a great point. The, like the ukulele is such a great little it's it's anecdotal, but it's a great example of exactly what you just said. They they literally got back the team back together. But it had been, like you said, twenty fucking years since they'd made Banjo kazooie or whatever. And uh right. Apparently they just and didn't like, have a minute. Didn't have and it in it's them not, again. You know, I'm sure it wasn't literally everyone who worked on right. Banjo Kazooie, and I'm sure it didn't have the budget of Banjo Kazooie, mm-hmm, and I'm sure mm-hmm. like you know it didn't have the corporate structure of Rareware. A bunch of guys fucking around, you know. Yeah. yeah. Where who's their boss? Who do they have to answer to at the end it's, of the day? Yeah. No. It's it's like if you want to make They're a fucking sequel, Kickstarter a re- backers, nobody answers. <laughs> <to them. laughs> if, if, if you if you want to make a really it. like like closest possible sequel you need both the artist and the situ like the corporate situation that they were in when they made the thing in the first place yeah yeah so they need the I same also, sort of incentives another thing i think is you have to like keep striking while the iron's hot like when you when you have yeah. like 20 years removed from the original thing like, you know, people grow, they change, they have different yeah, motivations right. and stuff. There's, and... there's no way I could create any of the shit on my YouTube channel 
There's no way I could make the same thing 20 years from now. Of course like, not. It's ridiculous. There is no fucking way. And, like, even if people that stuff dumb. ends up having, like, a huge impact on some people and they still remember, like, the asterisk where sucks 20 years from now, like, which there's no way. But, like, if if that happens, there's no way I could just make another, like, I think, oh, I'm going to finally do season two after 20 years. Like, it, no. It's like, no, like, you know what a great insane. example of this is for all of us? Mm -hmm. None of us could make My Little Pony videos with the kind of enthusiasm no. we did. Yeah, no, that's great. Ago. That's great a great point. example. Yeah, I It would be fucking it. impossible. Because uh, it's just a, I, I'm, like it's not that I've lost the abilities I had, but the the mindset is not exactly. there, and it's just like know? like just like the most important part. Just that it's this is so fucking basic, and so many people don't fucking get it. So let me beat it into your goddamn skulls. Like just think about it, people. Like fucking Nomura was the one who I, I believe, as I was reading, <laughs> still talking about. That. I, I well, he's just a great example. Nomura was the guy who suggested that Eris die. I believe it was him because I like there was discussion about like they were gonna have a character die, maybe it'd be Tifa, maybe it'd be somebody else, and I believe Eris was like his suggestion is like she should die whatever and like like it's been 25 fucking years or whatever like the man's a father now he's like a huge corporate like he's he's so ingrained in the corporatocracy of square enix this giant behemoth of a company which does so much now so much more now than the small potatoes of making a fucking shitty jrpg series that nobody gives a shit about anymore you know like he he is a different fucking man he's not a maverick artist anymore like like you could argue that he was i don't even know if he fucking was yeah but like uh, people fucking change and i'm so fucking sick of people saying that like just because they've got Kitase Nomura back to work on this or Grant Kirk and Hope or whoever to work on fucking ukulele it's gonna be the same shit it's so fucking obviously not true it pisses me the fuck off that people don't get it anyway no. fuck the compilation of Final Fantasy 7 uh I will <laughs> kill myself on the day that the remake comes out it's gonna be great looking forward to it okay let's move on <laughs> you're gonna go full uh, fucking Mishima and, like, oh god <laughs> yeah you know, the, you're gonna go into the you're gonna fly like a helicopter into the Square Enix offices and just <laughs> bail yourself on the desk of Nomura yeah. like <laughs> it's gonna be good to no avail oh god just as a symbol yeah, you know what the the best se uh, set of sequels are for the like mm. like for what we were just talking about? What's it's that? fucking Five Nights at Freddy's. All those oh, ones. God. Those are They're, those like, are well like, received. So despite they? yeah, despite what like like what people like generally think of them as like a stupid fucking piece oh, of yeah. garbage series, <laughs> they are actually like for the people who like that sort of thing. They are great sequels, and they continually, like, because because of, of how fast they're being yeah, pumped they made out. like f four months. You got a new one or something? It's ridiculous. Or something and like it's that. like that they all build on the whole thing, and it's like fucking. There's a movie at some point, I think. Yeah. Like the, the, yeah, this guy, really this too. guy is no, he knows what he's doing. Hey. I, I respect More power his to hustle. Him. Uh, Tom, you got a sequel that disappointed you? Oh, oh god, absolutely. Is it um, Metroid Two, Metroid Prime Two, that you were tweeting no, about dropping I, earlier today? I, <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of some of the stuff Metroid Prime's doing, but overall, mm. I give it, I give it a solid eight for sure. Oh, okay. It's not, okay. it's not a piece of shit. Um. God, what was it's like 2002, 2003, and I think I might have told the story before on the show, but uh, I was a young lad who had just gotten his PlayStation 2 like a year ago, and I was so excited for this game to come out, and I was an avid reader of EGM, and so every month I would Devil like, May Cry the, 2. Devil oh, May Cry 2. Oh course, God! Oh my God! I played I played so much of the original. It's like my favorite PS2 game fucking I, I, ever. I have not heard you tell that story. I just figured it me out neither. based right. on the details. Well, well here's <laughs> let me let me tell you about this day. Yeah. I counted down the days. I watched the trailer oh, over and no. over again because the trailer was fucking sick. Oh, and I no. loved the way the art style. It was so good. And you could shoot guns in two directions. That's so fucking that cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it was the fucking hype as shit. And and I, I, I don't have, like, money to buy games, so I buy, like, one or two games a year. And so, like, I made all my purchasing decisions from Electronic Gaming Monthly. I subscribed that. I love that magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I would always – like, I read every single one of them cover to cover. Uh, you like the uh, the little comics with the two agents? That was that magazine, Su right? Suin Chen, he still makes those yeah. comics. He has a YouTube channel. He does animations. They're fantastic. I, I follow him. He's great. Mm -hmm. um, so – I get I get the month's issue where and where they're going to review Devil May Cry 2 and I flip it open and I and like before you read all the reviews there's a page where they tell you what the game of the month is and it's not Devil May Cry 2. Oh and it no. That, and it was at that moment uh, I knew something bad had happened. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I, I remember cause it was, they would have cuz cuz a game of that scale 
it could have been like a seven out of ten, and they would have made it game of the like, 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 sure. like it could have been legitimately a seven out of ten, but they would have given it a ten because yeah, it was that big. Exactly. Release. It has to be like a real they, piece they of had, shit. They had run multiple <laughs> stories on the game leading up to its yeah. release. You know That's how is? I like my you know is? God damn it. so hard over this it. This fucking misogynist gamer culture can't handle a strong female character like Lucia. They fucking hate her <laughs> just because she's got a vagina. It's time to accept <laughs> that girls can be powerful too. You piece of shit. Oh my god. But yeah, I flipped to it I'm, and it's like 6.5 5.5 because oh, no. they did they, 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 oh, th they had three people review the games <laughs> back then and it was like a two prayed spread of just like this game blows nuts and just like Jeez. oh no Jeez. i hate i i just i've literally i've never been the same person since that, that was, moment that was actually my first like devil you may cry <laughs> oh dude <laughs> this game i fucking dude it was the worst and then i remember my friend bought it like at some point later and so i played it at his house and i was just like in awe of how bad <laughs> They fucked everything up. That was and like there, there were some mm. cool ideas in there too, which which made it sting even worse. Because they had a dedicated dodge button. Because like dodging was kind of like a clusterfuck right, right. in the original. Because you had to like hold down both shoulder buttons and shit, and it was weird. But they had like just a dodge button, and it made like everything so much cooler. But like yeah, the guns were shit. Like there was the game feel was terrible. Mm. Like the hits were awful. They changed the way the combo system worked, and it was really bad. And oh, it was it was. Oh, did you ever uh, go back and beat those games as a Devil May Cry fan? Just out of I have you know... beat I've beaten them all but two mm. because I just can't get through yeah. it. It's just okay. so uh, painfully what, bad. Why was two so bad? Like what happened in production? Did somebody? Uh, yeah, it's it, a different. It was not Ki uh, K Kamamiya or whatever. He didn't yeah. direct. I know he, somebody he else. He had nothing did. to do with it. They yeah. they passed it off to a new studio and they clearly had no oh, idea what they were Dark doing. Dark Souls. So, so did he come back for three? Or? Yes, I believe he came back okay. for three because three was fucking amazing and like yeah. It's Everyone literally Dark Souls. It, you, you, you <laughs> it's could, true. It's true. You could yeah. tell that they knew that the last one was so bad. They so like wait, wait. kicked everything up to eleven in the if third it is, one. If it is literally Dark Souls, what was Kamiya doing during uh, Devil May Cry 2's development? Oh, you know, let me that's, check. That his... is a damn good question. Did he work on he was Killer Beautiful Seven, Joe? or would that have been later? Uh, um, I don't. Think I'm gonna check. I'm gonna look at his shit. I think Beautiful Joe is too long later. Resident oh Evil God. Zero, beautiful. No, nah, Devil May Cry, Resident Evil Zero, Beautiful Joe, Phoenix Wright, uh, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. What the fuck? Oh, voice actor for Godot in the Japanese version. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Uh, yeah, yeah I don't, it was I either no Resident idea. Evil Zero or Beautiful Joe he was working on at the time. It was probably Resident Evil. Both then. much better games than Devil May Cry 2. So time sure, well spent. Sure. I'll give him that. Yeah. But yeah, oh my God. It's just. It's, there's the level of disappointment. Just It can't be described in words. It was. I, that was when my child. Wait, he didn't work died. on Devil May Cry three though. That's not. No, he did not. Here. No, he did not. Somebody else. Did. Really? So yeah. somebody else who is who also on a three. Genius. I don't know. I don't know. Incidentally, the spiritual, the spiritual sequel to that man worked on Devil May Cry. Did the same guy Indeed. who did three do four then? Because like it's interesting you say that. <laughs> that man, my favorite character I, I, I of all time. I don't know time. what his name is. I that, that no, man. no, that the, the, main, the, the main character. villain of Guilty Gear. Yeah, X, my favorite that fucking man? character. <laughs> that man, Gabe, you are aware that that's a character, or, or were you just, were you memeing? No, no, he was not, <laughs> there's, he was not at no. all. Oh, there's a guy. Well, now he, you know. <laughs> there's the main villain in Guilty Gear is literally named that man. God, I fucking love it. That's the, my favorite thing about Guilty Gear by far. Radcon Awakening. I'm doing a lecture on the lore of Guilty Gear. Get oh, ready. I can't uh, wait. I can't wait. It's gonna uh, be... It looks, it looks like DMC three was done by. Uh, guy, it was actually done by the same guy who did DMC two. What? What? Yeah, this guy. I guess he just got his shit he, together. Hideaki Itsuno, and he directed yeah, Devil May Cry two, two through four and Dragon's Dogma. Wow. Okay, I guess they just like I don't know figured their shit out or something. Wow, that that confuses the hell. You know out of what? Me, you man. know what? I kind of respect that. I kind of respect that this guy I... like. You know, he pulled himself up from the from the from the uh, abyss. From well, the apparently, depths. he was Shit. only brought on to Devil May Cry 2 midway through development oh. um, to replace an unidentified director. <laughs> <laughs> and was dissatisfied by how their work on the game was coming together. Oh, okay. So basically, he had to salvage the project from somebody. He's the guy who brought okay. in the dodge button. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's right. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Probably went, we need, he probably went. Okay, this game is completely unplayable. But at least if we put in a dodge button. <laughs> Beatable. <laughs> that's his contribution. Oh, dude, it was just really fantastic, fucking atrocious. But yeah, you know, that was my biggest sequel letdown. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. Um, the first Devil May Cry I played was Devil May Cry Two, and I remember thinking, "What the fuck is going on? I'm not gonna play this game anymore." Good yeah, times. you made the right <laughs> good times. call. Uh, good series. God damn it! Fuck. Devil May Cry Five. When total 
gaming Brit. I was going to call never. him Total Biscuit. I meant the gaming Brit. <laughs> I've given oh, up boy. hope. Every, every E3, I'm just like, is this going to be the year? And it's never the year. <laughs> this is now the Devil May Cry cast. We've really... Uh, we've uh, what's, what's each of your favorite sequel? Uh, or one that's interesting in some way? I, I got one. If sure. Else. All right. Go for it. So my, I th- I, there's a ton of great fucking fantastic sequels halo 2 was amazing right. mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. but but the one that i think really fucking blew my mind in terms of just like taking a good idea and making it so much better was zone of the enders the second run oh, oh yeah my God. oh yeah that's absolutely true the, the, Great game. Oh, can, can, can we just like, appreciate uh, Wait, how like... fucking good that intro for that game is is that like they they build up this whole thing of just like oh the uh jehuti is so much more like Arab- Arabatic and it can move around you can shoot multiple guys and it's not just one on one combat anymore yeah. but they Aerobatic. give you like 10 acrobatic. minutes <laughs> I can't aerodynamic speak. and Aero- acrobatic it's, I think well, did, I don't want to hear you correcting Tom's pronunciation <laughs> yeah. get the fuck okay. out of here <laughs> <laughs> So, so, but, but the great thing of that game is at the beginning they just trap you in the shitty mining mech, and you yeah. really have to walk down a straight path for ten minutes, and you're just like, oh my god, please end me. And then you get into <laughs> so JT, and it's so in. much fucking better, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh my god. And then you lock on like fifty dudes at once, and it's the greatest. Dude, moment and then at the of end of the game, time. you get the fucking nitro cannon or whatever the fuck it's called. Oh my, oh my god. god, it was the it's fucking so, best. Dude, that whole that whole Anubis fight was so fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah game fucking rules. Kojima the, Productions, the, Zone of the Enders 3, when? I'm ready for it, baby. Lay it on me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wasn't there a Lost in Concept about that or something? There was. By Hyperbit Hero? Yeah. And it was like a thing that was supposed to happen but didn't. I got to check that out again. I forget the details. Every, everything good, I don't get. I just made a, a vlog yesterday about how all my favorite gaming series are dead. So I have no, <laughs> I have no leg in the oh, race Including the, the Just consoles. like your precious Dreamcasts and your Sega consoles. You yeah. Know? That's every, everything I like dies. So I'm, esp- <laughs> I'm expecting a, all of you a... to die soon. <laughs> What is Aww. a good ongoing game? I guess you don't Dark. like Zelda or Mario or anything. Yeah. Like, Dark, I think the Demon only Souls the only thing is Metroid. Metroid's, Metroid's the only game that I still like. And that's that, like, going on. I mean, and until that just got revived yeah, like exactly. two days ago. Exactly. So now that I'm yeah. into it, I'm sure Prime Four will bomb. It'll be terrible. It's not going to be done by Retro Studios by some fucking. What's yeah. the guys who did Lots Planet? They're going to be doing Metro Prime <laughs> Spark, Spark, Spark Unlimited, Unlimited or something. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, <laughs> it's going to be a shit show. All right, let me let me give you my favorite sequel of all time. I, I've talked about it a lot, but but once upon a time there was a piece of shit called Gunbuster, and then they did everything right for once and made Die Buster like 15 years later or whatever. Uh, now Gunbuster is fantastic, and the fact that I like Die Buster even more, or rather, aim for the top one Gunbuster and aim for the top two Die Buster, uh, is just a testament to how fucking great Die Buster is. Uh, so Gunbuster, everybody, it's an old ass uh, Amino directed 80s anime about Amino. What did Yoshitaka I say? Yoshitaka Amino directed anime. What the fuck anime? did I say? Uh, uh, Ahiru, uh, fucking. What's fucking the man's Hideaki name? Ano. Ano, right, whatever. <laughs> that guy. He directed a piece of shit anime. Uh, it was really good. I loved it. Uh, about, <laughs> about being in space, a bunch of sexy girls uh, having hard work and guts, and then they travel close to the speed of the light, so relatively gets all fucked, and everybody ages, and it's the best thing ever. But then, then his, his, his little deputy animator guy, what's his name, Digi? Director Kazuya Sudamaki is uh, his protege. Protege, that's the word. Made fully coolie, and then he made Die Buster, and it was it, it it capitalized on everything that was great about the original in terms of like continuing the narrative in an interesting way by continuing like the how they were humanity has dealt with the threat of the space monsters post uh, the black hole bombs uh, er, uh, you know eruption some unspecified time ago. And oh, the fact that they don't tell you when Die Buster takes place, and then the ending. Oh my god! <laughs> and then as No No, my favorite you, waifu of all know, time, uh, besides Nico Robin. Yes. Did you know uh, Kazuya Sudamaki, uh, mm. th- that director? He he just finally made another OVA. Like, what's what, what's the OVA? Late early last early this year or late last year, two episode called Dr- uh, Dragon Dentist. That sounds and, um, good. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's fantastic. But it's the first. Because oh he's God. the one been he's he's the one who's been fucking up oh, these the Ava's, Ava right? rebuild right, movies right. for ten years, but he finally did something else. F- fantastic. And did Dragon's Dentist. That's very exciting. Was, uh, I should watch them. It was originally the first, um, you know, the the Studio Kara Animator Expo thing yes. that Mimi Me came from. Yep. Like the yep. first one of those was the original Dragon Dentist short, and okay. then they expanded that into a two episode OVA. 
Um, I think each episode's like 45 minutes long, too. So. I should watch yeah. all of those, including the original. Well, that's I fucking dope. Too. That guy is yeah. a legend, and I fucking love him. And Die Buster is like the, the coolest, comfiest, uh, beautiful, love everything about it uh, anime of all time. Great sequel. Great sequel. Uh, there you go. It can be done, everybody. And it, I, I'm a big uh, anti-sequel guy, but like there are times when the stars align and people just do it right. Uh, which is why I would just I would heavily discourage doing it. But if you're somebody who's got like a genius idea and you're like, no, listen to me. Here's my proposal for the sequel. I am going to use the themes that were here and artistically show you how I'm going to capitalize them and make them better than ever and more relevant and emotionally tie my story into that one. Uh, then approve. And, that, and that's it why we're all looking forward to Fooly Cooly 2, guys. Oh, it's going to be, gonna no. be the best thing ever. <laughs> well, <laughs> Kazuya Suramaki's not directing that yeah, one. Though. Yeah, unfortunately. I believe the guy who directed Psycho Pass is directing Fooly Cooly and 2. And e even if he was directing it, that wouldn't necessarily make me any... Well, okay, it would help no, a little yeah. bit, but, uh, you know, it's been 20 fucking years or whatever. Okay, I'm, I'm done. That's it. Die Buster. Oh, man. Um, Hippo, you got one? Great uh, I've I've got a few. Mm -hmm. Like I was trying to think because a lot of my favorite games just happen to be the first in a series. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I do have one. Uh, it's a it's a Shrek to the game on PC. <laughs> it's actually terrible. Don't play any game of Shrek two. Oh, I just want to uh, incidentally, Davu did map out a chart for us of the quality of the Shrek films over time, which is very convenient. That. Uh... Yes. Well, see, the problem with his, you know. his uh, well, okay, his, it's the quality consensus chart. Oh, so the right, consensus right. is that Shrek 1 is above the good line, mm -hmm. Shrek 2 True. is way above the good line, mm -hmm. Shrek 3 True. is below the good line, yes. and Shrek 4 is bottomed below the chart bad, Right. Um, as well as Puss in Boots. Um, but the, the problem with this, while this is the consensus, the consensus is wrong, and Shrek 1 is uh, it, an abhorrent no. film. Absolutely absolutely. Untrue. Shrek One is great. <laughs> no man. Everyone you go watch. watch it high. Everyone go watch. Uh, that's no. That's why. That do you not know the story, Hippo? That I oh, watched I that that's movie what high. And yeah, that's, that's why. That's why. I hate it's, it's everyone so much. Right, watch it sober. <laughs> Just watch it a hundred yeah, times. No, everyone, it all you need to watch of that movie is the epic video on, I believe, a little channel called Give and Take. That's Shrek without Shrek, or like Shrek until Shrek appears, uh, or whatever no, it, it, it is. It's, it, yeah, that it's Shrek, but every time Shrek appears on screen, the movie ends. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. That gives and you the it force. literally is like some, and then as it's the, the bang, as the bang of the outhouse opens and cuts to black. Yeah. Oh, like, fuck! It's the best. It's the best. Um, I, I, I have a, a, like a movie one. Uh, Lord okay. of the Rings: The Two Towers. Oh. I think is the best Lord oh, of the Rings yeah. film. Oh yeah. Um, it's 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 so it's so. I've cool. seen it on TV too I, many times, though. That makes it a bad movie. That it's a personal the problem, dude. Mm, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. What about the second one? Makes it your favorite one? Um, the Riders okay. of Rohan. Uh, <laughs> uh, the thing that the thing I well like the first one's great. Obviously, uh, there's yeah. the there's the the big there's the guy. You shall not qu go across, mm. and it <laughs> smashes the bridge, and uh, and you know there's the Mines of Moria. It's like really cool. Uh, the Nazgul, you know. He's cool. But, um, He's cool. The second one has the trees and the Saruman and the big attack, <gasps> the and awesome. it's got the Battle of Helm's Deep. I was about like, to say, that's, Jesus Christ. Like the I mean, that's, of that's, a, that's a big Deep, castle. Right? <laughs> Helm's Deep is the obvious, uh, the most obvious reason. Um, I, yeah, I good think ass fight. For me, it's hard to separate the three because like i think all of them have strengths and weaknesses that have to do with the fact that they are part of a series mm. like to me i'd prefer to think of that as one nine hour story as opposed to sequels because well, like true they're kind of all one like there's they're n there's nothing significantly well, different about them they're all just like the same story being told across three movies you know i, I, I guess but the, the, the way i've always like felt is that uh, the, the you know the first two were sort of out when I was young, and then the third one took a while to come out, and it had elephants and and weird things, and I just like there's ghosts here. I don't understand what's going uh, on. I, I didn't understand any of it, I, uh, so I didn't like that. I one. thought the Hobbit Unexpected Journey was good, but the Desolation of Smaug really really kicked things up a I, notch. In the sequel. I, 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 that's actually <laughs> the opposite. Like. Uh, I liked that first Hobbit movie, but the second one uh -huh. I just gave up. That's what I, I hear people felt like. I couldn't watch the third like. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still like it 
Delete yourself, Skip. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the third one. Where sucks, do they kill so the fucking kill. dragon? Which one is that? At the very beginning the of the third one, which okay. is why it's the worst. That's why. Because that's it just, also why. It cucks the entire because oh, the second movie oh. is entirely dedicated to hunting the dragon and it ends before they fucking yeah, that, fight that's it. Fucked on up. a total that's anticlimax. Up. It yeah. is the shittiest And then literally, I've like five, five minutes into the next one, they just kill it. And it's just you like, know, why didn't you just have the movie be five extra minutes? Because they Because they know it's the worst one and they want people to I know wrong. they did. You're not wrong. It, it kind of reminds me of like in in the Gurren Lagann uh, like film adaptations of the of, of the show. Like so, the whole fight. This is like the most disgusting thing ever. Like the first film ends like at the point where like Simone becomes a man, which is like oh, yeah. a fantastic climax. But then they compress the entire battle against Lord Genome, which was like literally the best part of the entire show, except for the actual final climax and they make a fucking clip show out of it at the beginning of the second movie what the fuck were they thinking what a mistake what a fucking mistake wait did they i thought there was like a super fucking well animated version of the fight with genome in the second movie absolutely not where like he walks down the front of his mech and all that that shit. happens in the, in the movie uh, that happens in the show too in the and uh oh, maybe i'm thinking of the show then uh, yeah i mean the show fight awesome. is fantastic it's it's like one of the best yeah. points of the whole show but you know uh they fucked up in the movie <laughs> Trust um, me. Uh, in terms of in terms of video games, uh, I can't really decide between uh, Ratchet and Clank Two, Sly Two, Sly Three, mm. and Ape Escape Two. So all of those are like like really good. That's uh, the thing about I think video game sequels have a much higher propensity for being like better because you don't necessarily you have just to use continue the, the, the stories yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and, and y you're usually like really tweaking the gameplay. By like, the way, guys. Uh, you know. I, I just wanted to to let you know. I'm looking here on the wiki for the Hobbit films. The total budget for all three films was six hundred and twenty five million dollars for all three of these films. Just that's not, that's not as bad as I would have thought, actually. For all three I'm combined, blown away. For all, like, yeah, it's all three all combined. Three, look at the fucking look at the cost of like uh, Pirates Three. Uh, I will. That movie's like three hundred and fifty million dollars by itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my right, god, fine. you reminded me of Pirates. Uh, the, the, oh, the second think, one's uh, think, not uh, bad. Second, the second one is... No, okay. wait, the second one was... The... No, as soon as jo uh, Johnny... Yeah, but... Not Johnny Depp. Fucking as soon as... Yeah, the second and third one are not great. The first one is a legend, and I love it. The first one is amazing, but I think um, second and third uh, as like a as like a sequels to each other. I mean, actually, it's like, it's a they're good. It's a fascinating example, actually, because the entire Pirates of the Caribbean idea is based on a fucking ride at Disneyland, and they made it into a movie. So they just obviously had some like good script writers or somebody who thought like, yeah, let's make a fun yeah. action adventure. And then like it was the the further corporatization as like those ideas dried up, and then like, uh, Davy Jones or something, fine, do that, and yeah. it was not as good. Yeah. I gotta watch them again. Yeah, the first watch one the is, first one. It's great. It's the first one's good. so good. I watched it recently. It definitely holds up. But th th there's, 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 there's just just the a Kingdom little Hearts bit level of like a... does not hold up though. <laughs> uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, like th there's like a part in the third one. I, I I I remember liking the third one because of how stupid and complicated it is, <laughs> and um. Yeah. And and all the like the the crisscrossing alignments and like the the stuff it is like oh I I feel so smart this is the Great Gatsby guys <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and really I'm really you really need a high IQ to understand the Pirates of the Caribbean three uh, right very true <laughs> four four is four is way off get out of there I heard five was okay though. There, that was. But I haven't even seen it. I just go. I just watched. I, the I thought I heard Jesse. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I think Jesse liked it. Yeah. So I, I've been just kind of combing through my favorites lists, mm -hmm. and I've got two sequels I gotta mention. Okay. Um, the first one, and this one I, I'm hesitant to count, but it's K on season two. Mm. And the reason mm. I'm hesitant to count it is that it's just continuing to adapt to the manga. You know, it yeah. came out a year mm. later. It's essentially just a second season, but the ramp up in production value for season two, and just the way that it's so clear they were taking it more seriously mm -hmm. is what makes like it's when you get to season two that Kon really starts to feel like a masterpiece you know yeah like the first season is really good and especially rewatching it when you know all the characters it's a ton of fun but season two is where it gets like it becomes Kino essentially you know <laughs> it's it's uh, really interesting thinking about that as like a an idea because like 
in real world terms, season two is a sequel, and you would think and talk about it as a sequel, but it is just continuing yeah. something that would have been there. Like, you, if you get rid of season two, it's like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. It is just one manga. But, but it is like, a new project, yeah. you know, because they, like, re... You know, they're like, yeah, yeah let's continue what I, to adapt, what I'm, et etc. et cetera. What I'm getting at mm -hmm. is, like, uh, there's, like, should a sequel be something that was not necessarily planned and then they decide to do that's a kind sequel. of how i i tend mm. to think like if uh i mean if the manga is one ongoing work and the two seasons of the anime are basically the same it's just like like for instance uh food wars is a show that's airing its third season right now and like if you watch all of food wars all the way through you're not going to notice like a huge difference across the three seasons yeah. it's more like oh we're just doing another one you know like the, the last one was successful enough that we can do another chunk but it's all the same manga it's all the same story whereas for instance uh ghost in the shell standalone complex season two it's an original show mm. and like while it's cribbing a lot of ideas from the same manga like it's a it's a whole new script that they had to create from scratch right. and like tell a whole different story based on having made the first one. So I tend to think of that as more of a sequel. In Kaon's case, like, like half of the anime is original content, if not more. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. in season two, almost all of it's original to the show, because they're adapting two volumes of manga into 26 episodes of anime. <laughs> um, uh -huh. And, like, just adding in tons of shit and making it more cinematic. So, like, to me... It's not a sequel in the sense of, like, oh, it's a different story, but it's a sequel in the sense of the first season allowed us to do this with season two. Like, now we can make it the show it was always, like, could have been, like, realized the potential of it, which is kind of what we're saying video game sequels allow you to do right, right. so much, you know. Um, which brings me to my second example, uh, Dark Souls 3. Fucking, per like, if, even, I would even have said... Dark Souls is a spiritual sequel to Demon Souls, mm -hmm. pretty obviously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And Bloodborne is a spiritual sequel to Dark Souls. All fantastic, but there is enough of a leap in style. Dark Souls 3 is just straight up, it's it's a, the new Dark Souls, and it's fucking amazing. I enjoyed Did it. You, uh, 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 sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but I just I, I wanted to bring up something about that. So you and I and Jesse did our Dark Souls 3 PCP a while ago, and like we all yeah. agreed that it's fantastic and we loved it. And that was even before the DLC came out that made it even better. And I just right. wanted to ask, have you seen... I, I, I'm quite perplexed by, like, I see a level of negativity on Dark Souls 3 out in the world that absolutely baffles me. And I don't know what the nature of it is, but I see all the time rankings of, I, like, Dark Souls 3, like, way below, like, above Dark Souls oh, 2, but way below 1. And I don't understand I, why. Um, I think I could understand it if you are someone who plays the games over and over and over again, because mm -hmm. Dark Souls 3 definitely has less choice. Yeah, yeah that's not like, wrong. Uh, like, like, I feel like, personally, Dark Souls 1 is, like, easy to just go back to and play uh, On the other hand, again, though... Despite having less stuff the in it. Game feel is improved. And, like, uh, online play, obviously, is way easier. So, like, there's... If you're just talking it's about, easier, like... easier, but is it as... Do people enjoy it as much? Like... Yeah. There's, there's always... Yeah, there's you're all, right. Because like, when it comes to stuff like that, where people play it ad nauseum forever, it really changes their opinions of it. Sure, you know? Sure, like, It's kind of like how you have people who... Like, anybody who has ever been ever a fan of League of Legends, mm -hmm. um, if they were into it for more than a couple years, then their opinion of it is that it's the worst game ever made, but they've played thousands of hours of it. Oh, my because, God. Like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because, like, you can't, you can't develop... Like, like you, you, when you're first playing it, you're just seeing it for what it is. Like, it's a fun game. But, like, as you begin to see all the ones and zeros in the Matrix mm -hmm. and you really, like, analyze everything about it, you'll find reasons to not like it and stuff. And I think with, with Dark Souls, that game just had so many weird things in it that you could do and so much sequence breaking mm -hmm. that, like, you could play it over and over again and usually have somewhat of a different experience. You know what, though? Whereas Dark Souls 3 doesn't have that ability in the same way. That's... But I'm not someone who's ever going to play a game more than once uh, every <laughs> year or two, so uh -huh. like that doesn't affect me at all, you know. It, on the, that the way, point, I would see. Okay, go on. Go on, uh, go on, go on. The, the way I would see Dark Souls Three is is like uh, the Undertale of the Dark Souls franchise <laughs> in that in that it's a great game to play through, 
but it's it, I don't need to go back and play Undertale again. Like it's not but, that but sort of a game. But what's the Dark Souls of the Undertale franchise? You know what? Uh, Homestuck Act Five, uh, <laughs> Act Two, <laughs> which I is what I was going to say. That... Is my favorite. Uh... The, my, 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 the, the best sequel to an act in Homestuck was Act Five, Act Two. That's the, <laughs> yeah. that's the literal peak which, of which Homestuck. Which one was that? Hippo. Oh, oh, Hippo. Hold on. Trolls. We need to clarify this before this becomes the main comment on the video. Oh, what you no. mean by I don't have to go back and play Undertale again is like. In the like after having played it five times, right? Like, like it's a game oh, that yeah, like yeah, necessitates yeah. Yeah, playing yeah, yeah. it over and over again for at least. I mean, right. I mean, once right. you've done the stuff, like yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no the the gameplay is not something you would go back to. Just not that, that I'm sure saying that wasn't the comment we get. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying in in that way that Dark Souls Three uh, uh, isn't fun to play like mechanically. It's just yeah. like um, I would love like just to play just. Just running around and hitting things in Dark Souls Three, mm-hmm. but going through the levels again is like, eh, yeah, I've been through them yeah. in the exact same way every time. You're not wrong. Yeah, I've I did it because I played through it twice. Uh, the second time just to do the big sequence break of like fighting the dancer first because it's easy right. to do that on New Game Plus. Um, but yeah, beyond that, there's not like a radically like Dark Souls One. The that game kept getting better as time passed because you kept learning about new crazy shit you could do with it. Like that was what got me so hype about the game, even though, though I hadn't even played it for a long time. Um, was just seeing people like put together videos of like here's everything you can do before the gargoyles, and it's like a crazy amount of shit you could do. And have it's you like, know, oh my god. Have you um have you seen that streamer? I forget his name who does like a challenge runs, and he's done like every single challenge run possible, like I've not using him, yeah. the left analog stick yeah. or the right analog stick <laughs> to move the camera, and like he just plays the whole game like that. Fascinating. Or playing with, incredible with the fucking rock band drums. You or know, something. though, like, I, this completely re- reminds me of a sequel that uh, uh, yeah, I suppose Dabuster Two is my favorite sequel ever, uh, but only because of like the I, whatever it doesn't matter. But the point is, I was going to say Kingdom Hearts Two is also a tremendous sequel that is one of my favorite things in the world. And it's interesting what you were saying, Digi, about like the whole replay issue of playing things over and over. And Kingdom Hearts 2 is so fascinating because it is kind of the absolute most boring the first time you play it. And every time you play it afterward, it gets better and better and better because the core fundamentals of the gameplay are so unbelievably tight and scientific and and calculated and perfected in that game that you've got these massive communities. Yes. You're going to have to, like, when we live in the same city, yeah. you're going to have to sit me down and, like, guide me through Kingdom Hearts 2. I'd be The only way I'd I'm ever going to play it is if you <laughs> sit there next to me and, like, like explain to me everything about the game while I'm playing. I would That's be, the only way I'll enjoy it. I would it. be so thrilled to do that. <laughs> but I'll give you a quick the last, tip. The, the first time I played it was a friend of mine trying to force me to play it. Uh-huh. Uh, like the same way. He sat next to me, but he didn't explain anything because he's terrible at explaining things. So I just sat there and complained about it for four hours and he laughed as I, <laughs> yeah, as I suffered. Yeah. I'll give you a quick <laughs> tip, though, that will aid you and anyone else out there who wants to get into Kingdom Hearts 2 and not suffer through it. Just literally skip every cutscene. Just skip them all. Don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, Holy just, shit. Just do that. That's the greatest permission anyone has ever given me it's, for a game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Just skip every single now one. Now I want to play it. Yeah. Oh, and, it, and you just... will have fun. You'll have fun if you just follow this one simple tip of not giving a fuck about anything anyone Holy says in shit. that game. <laughs> Um, the man who did the full presentation like on the story of Kingdom Hearts, advocating I, I skipping mean, all of the cuts. There's a time. That's, that's just his ploy. I mean, to wasn't get, that uh, the takeaway from that video? That yeah. video, the, like the takeaway from the video was none of this shit matters. That's it's why true. I'm, there's there's I'm, a time I'm absolving you. From there's a time when you when it. when a man is forced to face the reality of of the human psyche and just say no one wants to sit through this shit. We've just gotta. Yeah. I want people to play Kingdom Hearts <laughs> too, but I understand the reality that no one fucking wants to unless they skip all this. You shit. are legitimately a hero for that, mate. There are not <laughs> many fans of of a game who will tell you that. Well, you know what? Uh, yeah, it's because I've watched a lot of speedruns, and like the speedrun community, like yeah, they don't give a shit. They just, they just like right. those people just want to get to to the fun stuff. And like here, let me just give you a little taste of one of the fascinating things that you discover about Kingdom Hearts Two if you dig past like all this bullshit on the top. There is a concept called revenge values, as it's been termed by the community, which is this thing where. 
every boss. Uh, okay, so this this is a huge difference between like Birth by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts 2 that the retards who love uh, Birth by Sleep don't understand, and it's that in Birth by Sleep, like enemies never get stunned, no matter what you hit them with, they never get stunned. Whereas in Kingdom Hearts 2, enemies uh, bosses specifically can get stunned all the times, and this is what makes boss fights fun. Enemies or bosses can get stunned, but they have this thing called a revenge value, and it's specifically that when they're stunned, if you hit them a certain number of times, like like five or ten or whatever. At that point, they will immediately snap out of being stunned and start fighting again. So it's it's managing the enemy's revenge values in very particular ways that allows you optimize the damage you're dealing to them and utilize certain strategies. Are the as like, like this is the most advanced way to be a speedrunner and calculate how to like scientifically beat them the best while feeling like a Kingdom Hearts Keyblade slinging god. That's what makes Kingdom Hearts two so much fun. Finding out this kind of shit, but. There you go. King Bar and All right. King Bar too. Anyway, Tom, yeah. what's a sequel you really like? Did we get to you yet? Yeah, I said uh, Zone of the Ender, Second Runner. Oh, right. You went um, first. I do have a, a, a another kind of topic I wanted to bring up and see if okay. you guys had any thoughts on. Okay. Uh, this specifically deals with game sequels, but I suppose it can apply to anything. Because mm -hmm. uh, there, there are some games that I really like. Uh, the, two, the three examples that really come to mind are Devil May Cry, Halo... And uh, to an extent, I guess Ninja Gaiden, but not as much because mm -hmm. there's only two games in that series before they got shit canned. But like when you have, you enjoy the first game and it has like a specific feel and then the sequel tweaks the feel significantly. And then that just becomes the default feel for the rest uh, yes. of the series. And then you kind of lose a little bit of what made the first one great. Because you play Devil mm -hmm. May Cry 1, mm -hmm. then you play 3, because 2 doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> and and the, the feel is way different. Like, you have the style yeah, system, yeah. the way the it's combos work game. is different. Mm -hmm. And then, and then oh, you go to 4, and 4 feels exactly the same. And then you play yep. Halo 1 yep. to Halo 2. Halo 2 refines everything and changes the way it feels. And then 3 feels exactly the same and as Kingdom Hearts 2 is the revived. very same way. Yeah, yeah, I know totally know what you mean. So, like, do you guys do you, do you experience that? What are your thoughts on that? Cuz I like um, I definitely feel I, like there's a little bit that's lost in that transition sometimes. I can't think of many examples where it's worse after like I mean, in a game like Devil May Cry, like obviously they tried to change things for the second one and it failed. They changed things back to the first one but a little different and it worked and like everyone considers Devil May Cry 3 to be the best Devil May Cry. Mm -hmm. So, like, even though I think 1 and 3 are both worth playing because they're so different, um, like, I think it's, you know, 3 is going to be the one everybody loves, and so, of course, they're going to copy that when they make the sequel, though it's almost a shame to not keep experimenting, which Devil May Cry 4 does with uh, Nero's grabbing abilities and stuff. I think so Nero still was, a... like, way more fun than playing as Dante, to be Yeah, yeah it's, uh, the, the Devil Burger is fucking great. Is. Yeah, Tom, I, I don't know if you've watched uh, the Gaming Brits, like, endless videos on Devil May Cry, but you should. <laughs> you should, yeah. No, uh, I have pretty been. great. It's, his, it's just, his purpose in life. He mm -hmm. just became yeah. a cooler person because His that main exists. thing is he talks about Devil May Cry. Like, you can watch his whole... Like, you can watch the video where he gets into the franchise, and then the video from a year later where he's, like, an expert in it, and then you watch him just ah. continually never shut up about it over the course of the rest Good. of his videos. But, but to, to, to your point there, Tom, like I said before, Kingdom Hearts 2 really did the same thing that you're describing that like Devil May Cry 3 did to its series. And I, I always say when I'm talking about these games, Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2 are by far the best games in that series. And obviously I like Kingdom Hearts 2 overall. But even Kingdom Hearts 2, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> oh fuck lost a lot of what made Kingdom Hearts 1 really good, like, specifically, like, the platforming challenges that, uh, you know, you get abilities to overcome. And so, like, there has been an abandonment of a lot of the stuff that made Kingdom Hearts 1 good, even though they have, at no point since, uh, you know, since after Kingdom Hearts 2, have they reached the level of quality that Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2 was at. So, like, and, and it does frustrate me that it, it seems like there's people stupidly trying to just recreate Kingdom Hearts 2 over and over again without, like, knowing how or really, like, doing the research into what made that game good. And, like, nobody's paying attention at all to, like, what made Kingdom Hearts 1 good because we've all just moved on because there's, like, sequels. And that's super frustrating. And so I totally get um, the, the the feeling you're talking about. Another franchise that did this, uh, and Hippo, I'd be curious to know if you think this was, if, if you think anything was lost in the transition here, uh, Ratchet and Clank, because the first, first and second Ratchet and Clank games feel pretty fucking different. The second game really refocuses as a shooter, well, I, and uh, and all uh, the ones I, I would, from then on are mm. definitely I think, like that. Well, the, the way I see Ratchet and Clank 2 is an improvement on absolutely everything in Ratchet and Clank 1. I agree. Sure, Just like, sure. And it, it got rid of, or no, it expanded on the things that Ratchet and Clank 1 had like bits of, and bits of, like the, the spaceship battles, there was just right. two 
parts of that in Ratchet and Clank 1, and then Ratchet and Clank 2, it's now a mode. It's like a mini game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think uh, that was you know, like in, like that. If that was the status quo for like the PS3 games, that would have been good. You know, if, yeah. if if all the PS3 games were like Ratchet and Clank 2, you're right about that. I like that. But what the fuck about Jack? Like Jack One versus Jack Two. That. Talk about a transformation. Right. But it's but it's Jack Three. It, it, isn't Jack Three also a huge transformation from Jack Two? So not, it's not, not like the really. franchise just right. continues. Really, it, here's an interesting thing. Um, Jack, like when I was a little baby boy and I didn't know what video games were and I just played them. <laughs> what a hellish existence. I had existence. Jack 1. <laughs> uh-huh. I, had, I had Jack 1 mm-hmm. and then Jack 2 came out and I got Jack 2 and it was so different. Mm. But I didn't know that sequels were supposed to feel kind of the same. So I just thought it was cool. And then sure. Jack 3 came <laughs> out and great. it was the same sort of thing. So um, I don't really, I don't know. I think uh, the, the main thing was Jack 1 was a platformer through and through. It was just about jumping and, and punching and, and, and jumping and jumping. And then Jack 2 introduced vehicles, guns, uh, uh, edgy like transformation sequences, and uh, Jack 3 also has those things. I want to... Uh, I, I think, I think uh, like, for the... Th- it, it's cool. I like it. I, I don't dislike yeah. it at all. I want to jump into... Uh, Tom was saying this might just be for video games, but no, it's definitely true of, uh, like, long-running franchises that this happens, and it can be really fascinating. For instance, I think Dragon Ball kind of had this. Oh, yeah. yeah like, of course. like, original sure. Dragon Ball is, like, a funny little adventure comedy. Oh, yeah. And so then, right. like, everything since then is, like, you big, know, epic. Uh, what's funny I just about had this, a huge you know? fucking conversation with my friend about how Goku's a terrible main character because of that transition. I yeah. had a whole video about that. He did. I and think. you know what's funny, though, is that that transformation actually wasn't even within a sequel. Like, in Japan, that's just Dragon Ball, like, yeah, all the way just, up. it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> but then Dragon yeah, Ball Super, like, of course, it, but, is it more... It does feel it like was... a very stark contrast. I mean, oh, sure, they kept the sure. same name in the manga, but, like, Dragon mm-hmm. Ball was supposed to end. Oh, and was then it really? Okay. they made him It was supposed Dragon to end Balls. multiple yeah. times. Like, he, the he, story behind Dragon Ball is pretty fucked. I only know, like, this, like, very surface details, but, like... Goku was supposed to die, and Gohan was supposed to be the main character after Cell. Hey, and question. It was back. Just and all. Uh, the the mm-hmm. the thing I remember was that the way Dragon Ball ends is very very similar to the way Dragon Ball Z ends, which is like he just goes off and he's implied to have more adventures, but he just doesn't want to talk about. Yeah, them. right. And that's what Dra- Dragon Ball was gonna be ending there, but then he came back and there was. Hey, does and does Dragon Ball end with Goku as an adult, or is he still a kid? I, he's he's, he's like a young like adult. Wedding, he's like in his twenties. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah like like I remember him. Adult. I thought he had his final fight with like King oh, Piccolo yeah, as an adult that was the or thing. something. He had he had his final fight with King Pic- uh, with with Piccolo's son, uh, who we know as Piccolo. What? Oh, right, and, right, yeah, uh, yeah. Like the the great g- demon King Piccolo was like the big bad guy right, of Dragon right. Ball. Um, and he beat him, and then he came, his son came back, and they fought uh, in the martial arts tournament. And then Chi Chi came and said, "You promised me we'd marry." And then they <laughs> went off, and we didn't see the wedding in the manga, but that's like uh, now Goku's gonna get married, and that's the end of Dragon Ball. Bye. So did he end with cool. Piccolo's son on friendly terms? I mean, obviously we see how Dragon Ball Z. I, I know we're getting into Dragon Ball. I'm oh, just curious. Oh. Um, they don't end on Dragon friendly Ball. terms. Oh, yeah, they hate no. each other. Yeah, like it starts. No, no, no. They start with Raditz because they're they're not they're enemies. Right. They're, like, this he is, has to like recruit yeah, well, them. The, right. The, right. The, the the thing was like a Goku, uh, like the 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 son of Piccolo. Uh, I I keep thinking of him as that because that's what he yeah. is because he came out of an egg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he he came to the martial arts tournament, uh, and he tried to kill everyone, and Goku <laughs> eventually beat Epic. him. But then, uh, he says, you know, he got a senzu bean. Is like ah. Thanks, guys. I won. I won the f- tournament finally. Mm-hmm. That's, that's literally canonically the first time he won the tournament. Hey, hooray. Because uh, he still played by the rules right until the very end, even though fucking everyone was evacuated and there was, <laughs> like everything was destroyed. Aww. But then he gave a senzu bean to Piccolo, and Piccolo was like, huh, uh, and he just ran away. Aww. So it's like, it's implied that he will be a villain forever, but uh, he's he's like, oh, I respect you or something. That's cool. That's cool. I'm trying to think of some more examples of this. Um, another one that is kind of like that is Ghost in the Shell, just in that, like, the mm. original manga is so much goofier than, like, any other adaptation of it. Like, the original yeah. manga definitely has way more of a sense of humor and more, like, loose with its characters and, and designs and everything and is, like, 
it's it's just more I of mean, like a, you're, a pulp adventure with like really hard sci-fi. You are one hundred percent right. It's just that like yeah. I, I I in my mind I have them so partitioned as like different like like real yeah. alternate universes as opposed to sequels. But you're not wrong. I mean, you're not yeah. Wrong. I mean, some some of those sequels we're talking about. Mm, I guess all all the ones we've talked like, about like like Arise like, is obviously like different, and then Standalone Complex yeah. like like the major herself is, is like totally to be different. A prequel to the I, other. I know it's a prequel, and like, it's all fucked up, and it's yeah, crazy. but like it, it just uh, just the idea of how the franchise like if the original film had been like more accurate to the manga's tone, yeah, then I feel like Which like it was whether not at all. It, like I don't know if it would have become a success, but like whether it did or not. That's probably how Ghost in the Shell would have been from then on. Right. And, like, not right. that the TV show is exactly like the movie or anything. Like, the TV show definitely adds more levity in. But, like, mm-hmm. the fact that it even is such a serious military show. Oh, yeah. Like, like it, it's because that movie had set the press. Like, that's what people identify the major, Ghost in the Shell in as. In Ghost in the Shell, know? the major is way more informed as a character by the movie's Motoko than the manga's Motoko. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No like, doubt. the manga's Motoko is just like a goofy, like. I lo- she, she is the she's best always version got, of Motoko. Like, Boyfriends and stuff. She it's is great. Kind of, it's great. Yeah. I fucking She's the love most her. fun. I like. I like them all. I she like them fucks all. Fucks around and cracks jokes and like it's just way way more human. Is a literal sex worker. A literal sex yeah. worker makes sex software. It's great. She's the best. Uh yeah. Well shit guys. Um, are we are we done? Are we done with the questions? I, I think we Let's can't we can't have a, a a podcast about sequels without taking a, sh- a stab at our our good friend Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Oh, Fuck you. of course. I hate you forever. <laughs> of course. And 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 that's that's the biggest disappointment after Devil May Cry was Metal Gear. I hate you. Fuck. Oh, you fucking fanboys! Why can't you just turn off your brain and enjoy the sequel like the rest of us? Right, what the all fuck? Right, all right, <laughs> let's, let's get into questions. Uh, student of Ethereum says, on a scale of one to ten, which? Uh, I pick. Oh, uh, I pick l- eight. Uh, wait! I say a uh, uh, little academia. Little academia. <laughs> Got him! Got him! Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> I'm interested in this. Okay. Uh, uh, this guy just seems concerned for. Like concern for us. That's what I'm getting <laughs> okay. out of this question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Mick Cool Man asks, "When was the last time you talked to your parents?" Oh, uh, for me it was like uh, today. For me it was like four days ago. I uh, talked to them for like a whole hour on the phone. I um, don't talk to my parents that I, I I can go like months without talking to my parents really, which is not great. Yeah. Uh, but I have recently tra- uh, uh, communicated with them over the fact that we are using too much data on our phone plan. So, <laughs> yeah. My my dad. <laughs> My dad um, has, like, a 45-minute commute uh, to and from work right now. Shit. So, like, every month or so, he'll remi- remember, like, oh, why don't I just call uh, Digi while he's on his way home? He doesn't call <laughs> me Digi, but you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Um, he calls you <laughs> Digi Brony, your real name. Your <laughs> <birthday>. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I only want to know uh, Nate's answer to this. Okay. If you were a girl, would you use your body for money? Not necessarily prostitution, though. I, I would argue that it's almost impossible for a girl to not use her body for money, uh, just it's, as she goes oh, about life. So, better, so, yes. Greater answer than I ever could have hoped for. <laughs> Thank you for the ultimate red pill answer. <laughs> all right, here's one we can all answer. Okay. The gobs ask, what was the spookiest thing to you when you were a kid? Hmm. That could be a whole podcast, honestly. It, you're not yeah. wrong. Yeah, that should have been the Halloween one. Yeah, what the we fuck's wrong? Oh, we fucked up. Well, this won't even be out for another <laughs> week anyway. Um... Spookiest thing is, I, I mean, like the the rare occasion when I was a kid when I saw a actual horror movie when I was a kid, I was much more susceptible to them. So like I remember being young and I saw this movie starring Harrison Ford called What Lies Beneath, and this movie it was sort of it was about like a, a wife with her cheating husband, professor guy, and like he was sort of like the murderer bad guy because like he had like killed a girl that he had had an affair with long ago. So he was kind of the murderer. And like some some of the imagery from that movie stuck with me for years and really fucked me up. Like whenever there was like a darkness that I had to walk through, I would imagine like Harrison Ford was going to fucking come and kill me. Uh, you know, th- things of that nature. Things of that nature. It was good. Sim- similar for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, this is not when I was a little kid. I had lots of like little childhood trauma, like <laughs> things I'd seen that like haunted me. But like mm-hmm. in terms of what made me afraid to go into the dark, uh, Blood the Last Vampire with the Corrupterans. Oh, really? Because um, <laughs> we, we had kind of like a, a sort of a meme, but me and my brother Victor, because I, I saw the movie and I was like th- probably 11 mm-hmm. and he would have been like 10 
and we watched it with my cousin Boyd, who was uh, four years older. Mm-hmm. And like we would play this game where if it was a dark night and we were all hanging out, we would try to see how far into the darkness we were willing to walk. <laughs> like how how far into the dark are you willing to go before the corruptors get you, essentially. Mm-hmm. And like so, like Victor would start walking into the darkness, Whoa. and then Boyd would go, "Oh, a corruptor in!" And we'd all go, "Ah!" We run away. Um, I don't think we were so young that we like legitimately thought Corruptors were gonna eat us, but we were spook. We were easily spooked kids. <laughs> That's hilarious. Had never dealt with horror well. So. By the way, are these all questions coming from our beloved PCP Discord channel? Yes, they are. If you are the a PCP Patreon Discord, yes, that yes. that thing. Uh, given what spooked you as a as a kid? Uh, oh, this question is from the Gobs, by the way. Mm-hmm. They didn't mention that. I the, I was thinking, and there was this very specific... What if the question was from um, the Corrupterins, and they're back? They're coming for you at last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one sword. thing on Newgrounds that I saw, this Flash animation, and it was... It was um, it forever... Well, I'll, I'll just explain what happens. Mm-hmm. It, it's like a brightly lit kitchen, and there's just a guy walking in. There's like stuff on the TV... And it's like, a, you can see outside, it's like dark. It's like nighttime, it's just the window is black because it's dark outside. And he's just coming in, he's just fixing some cereal or just getting a, getting a bite to eat, just a little snack. And, um, you know, he's just watching TV and nothing happens for like 45 seconds. And you're just sitting there, it's like, what, what, uh, what is this? And then suddenly, out of nowhere, because <laughs> uh, you know how Newgrounds flash animations, you can't like turn the volume, you can't pause it, you can't click on it. You can't uh, change the volume unless it's on, like, you're, you're turning the knob on your own speaker thing. So it was just an e- extremely loud monster smashes through the kitchen window, grabs the guy and b- brings him out in, like, like three frames. And um, from then on, every mm. time I was in the kitchen and I oh. saw that it was dark out, I thought that would happen to me. And I just stayed really far away from the window for, like for like years like it was really <laughs> scary for that because it was such a s- specific like normal si- setting and it was really tense and suspenseful. I don't know what it was I called. feel like the guy would expect us to say just, like, clowns or, like, uh, werewolves. But it's just like, no, this very specific Flash animation from uh, Newgrounds.com <laughs> yeah. scared the that, shit that, out of me. Like, you're dealing with say, oh, Yeah, I know. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, mean, I ruined it's... Shade's life one time mm-hmm. um, by showing him. There was one of those. It was just like a, 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 a flasher or whatever they're called when you put. Um, what is it called when you put, like, a sudden loud a scare? A screamer. Yeah, screamer. yeah, that's the one. Um I, there was this one thing that was a it was Where's Waldo and <laughs> oh, like yeah. after like ten seconds it's a screamer <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me so I of course show my little brother Shade who is six <laughs> oh, at the time no. this thing Brutal. Shade legitimately cried for two hours oh, man. and it haunted him for years <laughs> like like, <laughs> like the, and the way he describes it is uh... that like up to that point he had not known what fear was <laughs> like you oh, taught like, him the like, fear oh my yeah, god like, like he legitimately like gained the sensation of existential dread from that amazing because it, it gave him like a perpetual fear that at any time like the world could end or something like that okay like that like everything can be normal and then it can be horrible you know <laughs> and, like, could, could, could he stomach f- like actually finding waldo like... <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea but uh i don't know if he even remembered that it was a where where's waldo thing amazing he remember the screamer but he uh a few years later, he became, like, really afraid of the apocalypse. Mm, like, okay. anytime we would, like, like people would talk about the end of the world or anything, like, he would get really freaked out that the world was going to end. And, uh, Fascinating. Yeah. Hey, I've anyway. got a question from the Twitter here that I think is pretty Wait, good. Wait, Tom has not answered Oh, I'm yet. sorry. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, um, I remember when I was a little kid, I watched a lot of sci-fi channel, and I watched all the alien abduction things and all the, like, crazy fucking hmm. conspiracy hmm. theories about, like, aliens living among us or, like area 51 and shit so i was always terrified of that i thought i'd either get abducted by aliens and like get like some like fucking thing because i already have a really weird phobia of like like bodies and organs and shit so like the fact that like i get abducted like opened up and like they implant something in the base of my skull yeah that was fucking terrifying to me uh so even to this day whenever i watch that alien shit i'm totally fucking into it but at the same time just like oh god the (laughs) government's watching me there's a spaceship outside my house fuck (laughs) Uh, yeah, that uh, aliens. Yes, that's a good thing to be afraid of. Um, okay, here we go. Also, uh, mm-hmm. Simpsons uh, Treehouse of Horror really grossed me out, and I hate gore because of that. Anyone specifically? Though th- they do love gore on their Treehouse of Horror. They really do. They really do. 
it, the, it's it's specifically like the sound design of the gore. It just really like I I hate horror mm, movies because mm. of the Simpsons. Hmm. Fascinating. Uh, well, okay. Here's a question from at Lord Saiba. By the way, this is on the Twitter uh, hashtag. Use Ask PCP. Send the questions out. Uh, okay, so it's if you were sent back to high school, current age, would you be a Chad or a virgin? How will your experience go? Think realistically. I'd current be age. current age. Absolute, absolutely a Chad. Mm -hmm. Like, well, mm -hmm. okay. Am I actually 26 in high school? Because I don't well, think anyone's gonna want to fuck the weird 26 year old. Let's guy, assume but, like, that it's your current like mentality put in your body okay, at that yeah. age. Mm -hmm. Um, because as as a woke adult, mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. that. Like, like, when I was in high school, the reason I couldn't communicate with anybody or get laid is that I just didn't know where anybody was coming from. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't understand what they were thinking or what anybody was doing or, like, what, like how to take control of a situation or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I feel like with high school girls, you could just walk up to them and be like, hey, um, suck my cock. And they'd be like... Oh, okay. Well, you know, like <laughs> it takes a little working up to it. I don't know about it's that. Not that you, hard, you may have been watching too many animes. No, <laughs> no, you see, just the way the way I've learned about how like people how people think, especially young girls, like uh, like fourteen year old girls are literally all trying to get laid when they enter high school. Like they go uh, in. With the, well, like, okay. Like they all right. want. They go into high school like <laughs> if I don't get laid, I won't be cool. You know. Like, okay, who, okay. Who, whose dick I do I have to everyone, suck to though. be cool, you know? Yeah, but, but like, as a guy who has no social, like, you, you are socially anxious, you're not just going to ask some girl to have sex with you. Um, whereas a girl can absolutely do that, and a guy is going to have sex with them. Well, of course, you know? of course. So, uh, so if, I was, if I was that guy, you know, like, now, I just have to have the confidence to realize that the girls also want to fuck me, you know? Like, I think that's what I didn't understand in high school. Mm -hmm, like, I thought, mm -hmm. I want to fuck them, they don't want to fuck me. And now I realize, no, they do. There are, there and, are, mm -hmm, sorry, go ahead. And there are so many, there are so many, like, looking back on it, like, obvious girls who were interested in me and mm -hmm. I never did anything about it. Of like, because I just didn't, I didn't understand that that's what was going on, and now I do. And I'm like, oh, you motherfucker, you could have had it all. There you are know? only two things that a man needs to get laid, and this is true at any age. Uh, one is just, and this, you sometimes you can just use one of the two. Uh, one is just like the confidence to just go up and, you know, just, just put your balls on the table and say, here they are, sweetheart, pick them up. Uh, so there's that, as Bill Burr would put it. And then uh, the other thing is something to back it up, as in, like, let's say you're, looking like, good. yeah, like, if you've got, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're like, the, the fucking looking, marching looking band. Looking good can mean a lot of different things. Th well, that, that's true. That kind of ties good. into a bunch of this stuff. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like, really disgusting fat slobs uh, ha can right. get late. Harry Weinstein. Uh, I, I, I was the kind of, I, the way I looked in high school is one of those, like, Harvey change Weinstein. the outfit and you've got a good looking guy. You know? <laughs> sure, but, sure. But it wasn't. But instead, it was a guy with uh, uncombed hair that goes down to his uh, knees and like shit facial hair and like wearing three different outfits that don't. I mean, like parts of three different outfits. So much of this like, is incredibly simple. Like, yeah, literally, get decent yeah. clothes, get a haircut, and just like don't cut, be gross. Cut my hair. If I had cut my hair, shaved my beard, dressed in layers, mm -hmm. and spoke to a woman, I would have gotten laid in high school. But I yeah. didn't do any of that because I didn't know better. It's not that complicated. But but social pressure is a real thing. I don't want to just say that I would immediately be a Chad. Like, there's unique pressures in in. In, uh, in high school and how to make this with stuff work with your current mindset though i mean like, i if like, i have no doubt you like literally just transplant your brain into the brain of a high schooler like i'm sure you can get i think I, anybody could I, yeah i like, really don't have much age doubt 20 could easily get laid in high school it's just a matter of keeping your focus you know being willing to play the long game when necessary and then just be be cool be cool i mean i'm i'm sure that if i had my brain um and mm -hmm. i went back I could have like actually made friends, which is like the the yep. first step. I think true. You're right. Because I right. didn't have really, I didn't really have like a group of friends that w were my group. I just hung out with other people's groups of friends mm -hmm. and just stood mm -hmm. around them. So like, and it was always because oh, I'm I'm worried that they won't like me, so I won't do anything. But obviously now I'm much more you know prone to just doing things and taking risks. So I would be definitely able to make friends and be maybe the most popular guy because I was like I, I even back then I was kind of good at guitar. If I yeah, had capitalized yeah. on that, I could have been the guitar dude. We had yeah. some and guitar then, dudes like, who were very well like, respected yeah. in my grade. 
Sam and Matt. So yep. Yep. Uh, Davu points out, also, don't be in an exclusively religious social environment. That usually you know, helps you. You're not wrong, but, but if you can cut under that, if you can be like the rebel, like, ooh, baby, I'm going to fuck you while God watches, you know? I mean, <laughs> you can maybe make that work. Jesus Christ looks <laughs> like me. I, a, I know, Davu. It's, it's a big typo baby. negative song. I feel like um, I could probably have the social skills at this point to be a Chad in that situation, but right, I'd probably right. choose choose not to because if, if we're going back to our high schools, because A, everyone in my high school, I wouldn't want to fuck anyways because they're all horrible people. B, I would have to lose all my weight again, and that would take a long time. And well, C, you're, you're, in, you're not – it's not literally you. You don't have to lose it's, the weight anyway. It's your brain in your high school self's body. Let's put it that way. Sure, sure. I, I mean, I don't know. If you're like a real fat right, did guy, did you mean that you were issue. fat in high school and you've yes. lost weight since then? I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. Okay. I'm fat in high school, significantly fatter than I am right now. You know, um, oh, so I, I, I'd I have to work that. on that. But then also, I'd probably be too busy trying to invest in Google, and, and then I could be the <laughs> chat because I'd be fucking rich. <laughs> How the fuck are you going to invest at age 16? Uh, I could Find forge a way. it. I'm, I, have, I have a 28 year old you, brain you, at this you, point. You, I could figure something out. You put. You put your piggy bank in an envelope. And <laughs> type yeah. I'll be like, Dad, Google. buy Google. Buy Google. I know it's a weird word, but trust me. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Mail to Steve okay, Jobs. Son. Wait, wrong guy. Okay, whatever. Uh, all right. Well, that's a good bunch of questions, I think, everybody. I think we're good to yeah, wrap uh, this one up. Yeah, we're not going to top that one, so we might as well. Uh... It's true. All right, everybody. Uh, if, if we're currently, I am a... Uh, 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 drunk, and that's because the next episode we're gonna do is a bonus episode, mm-hmm. right? We're recording it immediately after this. I think it'll actually come out before this episode, though. It will. That's right. Um, that's so right. if you want to hear the aftermath of me drinking throughout this entire PCP <laughs> and then getting shit faced right afterwards, go become a patron. For five dollars, you get the bonus episodes that we record once a month. All of them that are always goofy, hilarious, weird shit. Uh, the next one's alcohol, um, or the one that's already out. The, the newest one is alcohol. Indeed. We're going to be talking about alcohol and getting shit And there'll be eight um, of them by the time you hear this out. Eight episodes Yes, for you five can listen bucks. to all eight. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, you can literally yes. pledge $5, watch all eight, and the unpledge. The value gets better every it month. Does. Give them yeah. ideas, you mongoloid. But, but they, won't, they won't because they watch all eight, and they realize that they want they want to be able to access the future ones. Exactly. You know? Exactly. That's how they and know. And no one's got the no one's got the kind of like weird patience that they're going to like pledge once every 6 months or so and like get some of the ones they miss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're counting and on don't the Don't forget weakness we're also on site. iTunes and Google Play Music, so if you want to listen on your mobile <laughs> the, device sans YouTube and The only uh mm-hmm. the only people who that. The only people who would do that, like like pledge once every six months to get the episodes, are the people who would not have pledged until they just found out they could do that. You know? Yeah, yeah, you're like, right. Like, there's some people who we might get because they just found out that there's, like, a scheme they can do, and now they'll actually pledge. So we're still getting people we wouldn't have otherwise. It's true. It's a net gain for us either way. Uh, and, mm-hmm. of course, we've got a little bit of merch. If you go to our Redbubble page or our Print All Over Me page, there's links in the description. Click on those and buy some dank PCP mugs and shit. They're dope. You know, we need to we need to run like our ads in the middle of the episode. You're not wrong. That's what we really I, I've been watching other big podcasts, and they do that. They do it like right in the middle. We should do it like before the Q and A or something. That'd be a, a pretty logical like, uh, time. On the hour is usually a good place too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, uh, anyway. was there anything else? Uh, Twitter. We already talked to. Yeah, at TP Crastinators. Subscribe to our Twitter and shit. Pledge to the fucking Patreon. Subscribe to this channel for new shit. Because there's a lot of stuff that doesn't even get on the Patreon. Just videos uploaded here, like the the current intense spat going on between Tom Oliver and Ben Sane over why D and D is good or shit. Who knows how that saga will say, conclude? I just want to say Ben Ben's argument did not impress me. I respect <laughs> his opinion, but he literally just said everything I dismissed in my the first ten minutes of my video. Oh so. shit, Ben! You hear that? You've been called out as a yeah. fucking yeah. hack fraud. You're an embarrassment. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's it. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week or sooner. No, wait, bonus episode. Yeah, okay. Give us money. Thank you, everybody. All right, we're leaving. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. to be working right now I'm supposed to